What's up? Welcome to ColorCast number 34 with John Griffin Jr. What's going on, John? Thanks for joining me. Hey, you know, I had to walk all the way up the stairs. It was a, Damn. It was a long journey to get up here, so I'm, Damn. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here. How's it How's it going today? Good. Yeah, full yeah. disclosure, we're roommates, so yeah. if it gets weird, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll try not to share each other's secrets too much, you know, but can't can't make promises. No. Yeah. No, there's no there's no promises in life no. except death. Right. Yeah. Sure. And taxes, people say. Which some people avoid very well. So So maybe then but death. Do you think De- people, definitely death. Do you think people do you think people avoid death? Um I think the way the world's moving, there's gonna be people that live way longer than they should. So yeah, kind of, you know, with all the stem cell therapy, being able to like just yeah. inject baby fetus like cells into your body to kind of like mm. heal your cancer and whatever. Yeah, it's that like a seems, thing. That it's seems a thing like now. It's working pretty well too. Yeah, I'm I'm really holding out for you know a cure for for my Crohn's disease. So I'm hoping one day I can just you know yeah. get some cells you know injected in my arm. One day it's gonna be great. I think I think you might be right. I've I've heard uh, I've heard about stem cells. For a while now. I remember it was South Park about stem cells. That's mm-hmm. like when it was peak stem cell season. Right. Like in, well, maybe it's, I mean, in terms of like it's it's a controversy, you know. Mm-hmm. I remember that under the Bush administration, there was like all these bans against it or something because it was tied with abortion or something, which I don't think it is. But I've no, I mean, nowadays it doesn't matter because it's not even the same technology. It's for science, you know. It's like yeah. saving people's lives, so the end of the day it's like well it's not even it's not even can't be too mad about it well there's a lot of ethics in science you know like i know there's there's definitely ethics in science there is there is but i guess overall as long as they're using it for therapy and not trying to like change like the future what's going on okay we got lagnarok and be free in the chat right now got what up lagnarok trump eats baby fetus to cure covid Right, that's what happened recently, right? Yeah, what's, yeah, yeah, isn't there pretty much? Right? Yeah. Well, Regeneron, I think, is well, what he took, which I, is kind of like a. So I think a lot of the stem cells now are synthesized, or like you, or they're not made from actual fetuses. I think they can make them from any human cell yeah. now. So, yeah. so I think Logan's making a joke, but but yeah. um, which is funny. That's how they're going to make designer babies of the future. Um, the problem is women only create eggs like one time a month, but now they're taking skin cells and they're turning that into eggs. So that way they can just Mm. pump, you know, just create babies like on demand, like, and then you can choose the eye color. You can choose whether or not the likelihood of it, you know, is going to be good at sports. Like, you know, obviously there's nature and nurture. Yeah. Well, yeah, a little bit. I'm talking a little bit about CRISPR, but yeah. Designer babies. Yeah. 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 That's like, that's the future, like for the really rich, you know, they're going to be able to, I've been reading about that. It's kind of interesting. I feel like it's, they're going to be in space. They're going to have designer babies. They're going to have neural implants. They're going to do all this shit. And Mm -hmm. and what are the working class people going to do? They're already going to have, they already have a leg up. They're going to even have more of a leg up. I feel like, so Mm. it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Be, be free. Be free. Just said something about, uh, it was nice. She said, you only die once, but. And then you, what did you, what did you say? I can't, I missed it in the chat here, but it was something about, uh, until the last person speaks your name, even after death. Was that what you were talking about? That your name still lives on or who you are. Like this video mm-hmm. might live on. One of us could die tomorrow. Right. Yeah. And then, but this, as long as this gets yeah. archived on, t- right. on Twitch. Well, you're the sonic biographer, right? Isn't that what it says on, mm. on Instagram? I think. Yeah. That's what. That so on. that's, that's pretty much. That's just it in a nutshell, right there. You're just trying to, yeah, trying to leave a legacy. Mm-hmm. But uh, so you're not just my roommate. That's although that's one 
redeeming quality. <laughs> yeah. No. But you also uh, are an entrepreneur. I think the first time I met you, I'm trying to think of the first time I met you actually now. Yeah. I don't really remember the first time we met. It's company brewing, I want to say, but like mm, that could probably. just be like, you know. <laughs> that sounds right though. Like a washed out memory that I have of meeting you. I don't know. Hmm. I'm trying to think of the earliest, like, I mean, yeah, I've definitely met you a few times, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A couple times at least. Yeah. Cause I'm trying to think, I remember, I remember at first I thought it was like, oh, is that time at the Vicen Vicencia or like Vitrix at the time. Oh yeah. Vitrix yeah, yeah, yeah. vibes thing. But I was like, no, right. then I knew you before then. And that's right. cause I think I was at your apartment in Bayview one time mm -hmm. in like half a year or like two, two winters ago or something. Yeah. I think you were. I don't remember why, but you were there. I think we just went and have a, had a, some wine and oh, okay. something. I, yeah, why was I there? I don't know. I oh, really oh. don't. I don't remember. I feel like my memories this year have kind of just like, poof, like oh, 2020 that came and then I just like don't remember anything now. I don't know. Was that last year? I, I don't know. You die twice when the last person speaks your name. That's the second time you die. Oh. Mm. That's really deep, and I really appreciate that. I need to turn the compression up on my voice. You know, I feel like that's completely true, though. You know, um, that's why people are artists and musicians and, you know, try to do things that impact humanity because, you know, when our humanity ends, at least the things we've done can live on, you know. And that's, that's how I look at it. Oh, shit. This, that was way too high. Too much compression. <laughs> Gonna have to... Back that threshold off a little bit. I'm just going to turn this down. I don't know how that far, but it's further away now. I think that's better. Hell yeah. Okay, that's way better. But really, we should be talking about your hot yoga yesterday. Did you, do you feel like you're going to pass out? Like, what, what happened? You know, I, I'm changing the subject a little bit because <laughs> it's been on my mind. Like, I just don't, I don't understand how hot yoga works wearing well, a mask. Like, I don't know how hot yoga works in general, so. Do you know how yoga works? Yeah. Just imagine that, but like hot. you're hot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> in, the, in like a hot, in a hot room. So I do a thing called vinyasa flow. It's not, most people, when they think of hot yoga, they think of Bikram yoga, which is like this. Bikram is a really interesting character. Very controversial too. Cause I think he's like got a bunch of lawsuits and stuff and he's got a bunch of, I don't know. There's a lot of allegations of him being like abusive to all these people and stuff. He's basically a guru, right? Like, that's what gurus do. An abusive <laughs> yoga guru? Is that... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't so know. He's, but he started this, like, franchise called Bikram Yoga. Okay. And it's all the style of just, like, intense poses, but in 105 degree uh, rooms. Yeah. Or, like, 100, 105. And uh, I've done that a couple times, but I didn't like it as much because there's not a flow around your... Uh, breath like sure. so it's i don't really get the same meditative aspects of it at yeah. least i'm just, that's what i noticed in it i'm sure if i did it more there's people who swear by it and they're like oh bikram is great even though the yeah. guy's an asshole like he yeah. was right uh but the vinyasa flow is just it's lower temperature so it's like 90 90 to 95 okay. like they start low and then they like the, you know you get used to it and then they they, they turn it up a they, little they turn it up when yeah. when like it's peak time and then they make you sweat yeah. and some instructors it's basically at the instructor's discretion so like as soon as but i, I they switched them to they slowed them to or squashed them to 45 minutes now, at least the one they have to go to. So I only did for 45 minutes, but it was an hour session. Like the la first and last 10 minutes or 15 minutes, they're just like you lying down and yeah. just being like, oh God. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it was really good, dude. Was I, there a lot of people at it or was it like... No, there's very... I mean, they had these like... Normally, I'd say it was probably... Normally you could fit probably 40 people and 20, 30, 40 people in there, but yeah. there was probably only 10. Yeah. So that's the thing for me, like with yoga and doing stuff like that. I, I feel like I only really get the meditative aspect from it when I'm in a group environment. Yeah. And the first time I ever meditated was when I was like probably 18. Like I didn't really, 
I wasn't exposed to that most of my life until I got older. And then I did Qigong in like mm. a group environment. And everyone in the room was really into it and like following the practice. And there's like 30 of us and like, I never felt so like tired after, you know, doing something like that in a group where I was just like, I just like my whole body is just like, Oh wow. Like I was so relaxed. Like the, it was the most meditative state I've ever been in probably like, and now I'm like, okay, I need to get back to that mm. feeling. So I'm excited when the world gets a little bit back to normal to be able to go into those spaces and like try to yeah. get into that more. Cause I can't get into a meditative state as easily on my own. I feel like, I have to have the energy of a group hmm. to really. I don't know. Does anyone else feel like that? Does anyone? What's up? Yeah. Creative, right? What's up? Yeah. Oh, Ladragi, Ladragal. He's here. That's that's hot. Oh, old meme, right? Someone was just talking about Paris Hilton. That's that. I'm assuming that's a Paris Hilton meme. Yeah. I think that's so. hot. Yeah. Right? That's the thing she says. Yeah. A lot. That's. Yeah. What's up, Creative Rat? Uh. I know what you mean. I've like meditation. Meditation means a lot of different things, you know, to, to like, I remember reading Marcus Aurelius's book called meditations. Well, I mean, he didn't like write a book, but it was just like his journal or some shit where he just like wrote shit down. He's just a fucking genius. So they just, you know, it's a book now, but, uh, I looked, I was like meditation. These aren't him. Like I was just assuming you're just like, yeah, it's like Eastern meditation. He's like, fuck's going on out there i don't know it's like some something going on outside like right outside definitely oh will smith meme will smith meme that's who no, that's smith meme. hot that's hot. i don't know that one i don't know it either but uh i feel i feel like he's referencing paris holton though so if that's the meme maybe from not from the youtube rewind hmm I'll have to check it out. I'm not really sure. I don't know. Yeah. But, Lost on me. But like the meditation aspects of it's, it mean, it means different things. You can just sit down for two seconds and just, well, when I, when I looked at Marcus Aurelius's meditations, then I was thinking about like, what the fuck is meditation? So I looked it up and I looked up like, okay, what's the definition? Like what, what's the right. etymology? Like sure. where did this, what does this word come from? Right. And from my understanding, it was like to look back. It's just like reflection. It's just, right. you just look on this, you just reflect on something. Mm -hmm. So some people like you can, you can meditate on like the actions you did and like think about them and just like feel and be present and just like feel that. So you probably meditate more than you think you do. Oh yeah. You know, that, but, right. that, but like when in the shower is a great meditation. Right. I guess know? for me, it's like when I can completely Fishing. turn my brain off and I'm just kind of with my breaths and I'm yeah. not really thinking of anything. It's like hard yeah. to always get into that. That's very difficult. Perfect state yeah. and to stay there for a while too. Cause for me, I can, I can get there, but then I'm instantly like drawn away and I start mm. thinking of something and then I'm constantly telling my brain, no, quiet your thoughts. You know, it's okay. Like this is normal, but just focus on your breath, focus on your breath. And like, I can't always focus on my breath, but well, hey. that's, the, that's the tricky part of it, man. And I think it just takes practice and just like anything, right? Meditation yeah. while showering meditation. I mean, the, the, I feel that way too. It's very difficult to do that, but in yoga, that's why like, just because you're sitting in like that, like make your mind blank type thing. Um, I know that's one type of meditation. I know that's like, um, it's definitely something I've, that's, I've tried. Yeah. And it's definitely difficult, but it really just like kind of, you just kind of put yourself in a little trance really. And you're just kind of just mm -hmm. in that moment. And with yoga, I feel like it's a moving meditation where it's the same type of thing. Like my yeah. mind does shut off, mm -hmm. but like all I'm focused on is the movement. And so I'm like doing the same yes, thing over and that's, over. That's why I enjoy thing. yoga because yeah. it's the movement and the breath and everything you're you're just kind of distracted by what you're doing with your body that you don't have time to think of anything mm -hmm. but what you're doing in the moment, which is really cool. So, uh. yeah, I, and it's difficult. Like, I think parts parts of it that I like uh, too is yes, like I like the fact that you get but you put in yourself in uncomfortable positions and uncomfortable situations and like. 
or seemingly uncomfortable, right? You're trying to find a comfortable spot Mm -hmm. and it it shows the mental connection of like being uncomfortable or being our pain or Mm -hmm. like discomfort and you, your mindset towards it, right? Like, yeah. so like you're constantly putting yourself in uncomfortable positions. And like they say, like a yogi master can just be in any position for any amount and he's fine. You know, like I got, I got fucking like when I go in certain positions, I like lose circulation immediately, <laughs> you know, like super fast. Oh yeah, like, for sure. I can't do certain poses. I can't do certain things, but like it's, uh, it's, I don't know. It's nice in, in that sense of, too but i I like hot yoga in particular because it's a meditation it's it's stretching it's balance Mm -hmm. um and it's a detox because of all the sweat yeah so it's like and it's a great deal you know (laughs) and i'm all about the yeah ian's mostly in for the good deal (laughs) it's like yoga is it a good deal all right i'm there let's do it well the this place in particular, Milwaukee Power Yoga that I've gone, has had pretty good deals. Although now with uh, with COVID, there's some... Every breath you take, every move you make. Every breath you take. I'll be watching. <laughs> oh, no, just from singing that, I bet they'll, they'll uh, copy, copyright strike it. Oh, gosh. Did we just ruin the, the whole thing? <laughs> I think it's I think it's short enough. Yeah. It was a sample. It was just right? a sample. Yeah, it's what hip-hop do artists do. They're doing okay, so yeah, they're doing. I think that. if we were to go any longer with it, mm-hmm. we'd have to. Yeah, then then Google's gonna be knocking at the door, right? And they're gonna be like, "Give me all your money." Yeah, we need a percentage <laughs> like, of your earnings from Yo- yeah. the time you use that sample. B free says I struggle to sit still. Yeah, dude, that's that. Whenever I'm on the phone, I have to move. I can't sit and and talk on the yeah, phone. Yeah, I'm having a hard time sitting still right now, honestly. But yeah. I might have to do some like jumping jacks at some point, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. yeah. See what happens. Yeah. The, the, the cast is young. <laughs> so yeah, okay. So maybe I don't remember the first time I because I think that time that I was at your house or your apartment or whatever it was. Um, I might have ran into you at like mitten fest or some fest, some outdoor fest. Yeah. I think I was going to see a friend play. And then like my sister, I went like to lunch or dinner with my sister and her then boyfriend or one of her friends or sure. some, I don't know who knows someone. Yeah. And then they were like, okay, we're leaving. I'm like, or like, then we went to the guitar place, but then they were leaving, gone and I was going to go home. But then I ran into you and you're, and you're that's like, that's pretty oh. much how it works with me. You know, you yeah. run into me and then you're just like hanging out with me. And like, that's, yeah. that's how I roll. It's great. Yeah. No, yeah. I, but I feel like that was the first time I like really talked to you, like, mm-hmm. or had like time right. for us to just like know each other. But yeah. I don't know before then definitely saw your name, your yeah. artist name, every, like, a bumblum i would see like every show <laughs> yeah i mean back then i was playing a lot yeah, of shows play, like every show yeah i was playing a lot of shows it's a lot of fun yeah. Um, yeah that's fun yeah and since since then actually this whole i don't know 2020 i've been focused more on just like releasing things so i actually have three eps out in the last three months so it's oh, been nice. kind of fun yeah, a, at um, band camp on band yep camp. they're on band camp so if anyone is listening that knows bumblum or Bum Ilium. Uh, yeah, there's music now. What's Bum? Is that your... There's been music, but there's, like, more, finally, music. But, yeah, it used to be called Bum Ilium. Mm. Um, and then the name changed, like, two and a half years ago to Bum Alum, which is a reference to our broken, you know, education system, essentially. So, it's like... Oh, oh yeah, I was wondering about yeah, that. Yeah, so alumni, Bum Alum, it's like... And that's kind of how I operate, you know, I like... I see that there's like these negative things in life and I'm just trying to bring attention to them. You know, like that's what I do with the cookie business. It's like, you can still have things that taste good and they can be healthier for you, you know, I'm like trying to bring awareness to that. And then Bumalum was me trying to make music and bring awareness to, you know, how messed up it is to get educated. Cause I went to school for recording and music technology and like Hmm. when I graduated, I was like, Oh, I'm going to have this really great job in a recording studio. And it's like, I, I worked in a studio and I did some of that stuff, but at the end of the day, it was like more about like the process and how I went yeah. to college and how I like 
I like learned how to be to get better at learning how to do things and I ended up realizing I didn't even want to go down that career path necessarily but in the grand scheme of things I still feel like if I wanted to go back to school right. it costs so much money that I was just like well I just gotta have to yeah. make the best of this no, now th- yeah and like I mean that's what school is it's kind of like a crapshoot if you don't really know mm-hmm. if you don't really know like what's uh coming around the other side or like mm-hmm. or if you're not informed with like what your real options are because i feel like a lot of schools don't really like they just you'll just get hey okay and now i have a humanities degree right it's like okay well now what like or like i learned like those are really cool things to learn about like people should learn all about that shit like you know like i think and there should be institutions that teach people that shit yeah but i feel like there's that myth of just like college equals good job. Right. And right. And so, yep. and so then I think what, but what you're at least from my understanding of the bum alum, it's like kind of, yeah. Drawing light of that. Like, yo, yeah, <laughs> you can do whatever you want. If it's, you just try and you fail and you learn and you grow and you just keep trying and keep doing new mm-hmm. things, you know, it's like, like I started a cookie business during quarantine and I don't know, it's been going pretty well. It's been a little slow last month, but I got into a bunch of stores. I've been selling stuff online yeah. and like getting some write ups. But it's like I would I didn't go to school for the culinary arts, you know. I like kind of got a job working at Bitter Cube and I learned how to make bitters for cocktails and I got involved with, you know, working in kitchens and stuff and I've had jobs in the in this field but not exactly baking, but it was just kinda of one of those things where it's like I'm just gonna go buy all the ingredients and I'm just gonna keep making cookies until they taste good, you know, and like yeah. And that, I feel like you can do that with a lot of things. Like, that's how I became a musician in the first place, too. It was, like, my, the first thing I ever did with music was I came home one day when I was, like, 16 years old. I had, like, one of those computer mics, you know, like, oh. from way back in, what do you mean, in the like, day. Like, just, like, those long, like, uh, pencil kind of mics oh, sure, that you would just sure. use to kind of have, like, a video conference on Skype or something. You know, this was, like, 15 years ago. And I just got all these pots and pans and I had uh, audacity, and it was just me like hitting these pots and pans. Hell yeah! Just like that was my first thing I ever did trying to make music. I was like, "All right, gotta start somewhere. Let me grab some pots and pans and just hit That's some how stuff." It starts, man. Yeah, and I, I had the. It was fun. <laughs> I did this. I had the same thing, man. I, although I used a, and on the monitor there was a monitor that i got from my uncle and aunt, my aunt uh, Chris and Uncle Jim. Shout out to them. They got this like old, they had this Windows ME computer Mm -hmm. and Windows ME was an operating system that was fucking awful. It was just terrible. Yeah. And they had all these problems. So they're just like, fuck it, get rid of it. And they just keep, I was like, I'll take it. And they're like, oh, okay. And so I brought it back and like had a monitor. It had all these parts in it. Like all you got to do is replace the operating system. So I installed Windows 2000 on it. You know, mm. and it was running fine. Sure. You know, and then, uh, but they were just like, fuck it. We want a new one anyway or something. Yeah. And so they gave, they gave it to me. And then the monitor that it came with had built in speakers. It was a fucking, you know, one of those really fat, long monitors, yeah. right? Like yeah, yeah. that you don't even see anymore anymore. No, except but, for like a Goodwill. Ex- yeah. Maybe. Except for Goodwill <laughs> or like in vintage shops. Yeah. And like, right. but, um, it had a microphone in the in the front of it and two speakers yeah and so it had like a just a microphone cable that i plugged in and i was able to record with windows sound recorder nice like that's what i was doing too yeah Yeah. but you could only record 30 seconds at a time okay it was just like a record and a stop button or some shit like that just that Mm -hmm. and it only did 30 seconds but you could keep going once you recorded 30 but you had to like press it Okay. Or at least that's what Weird. I thought. I, you yeah. know, maybe there's a ways to do it, but I was really little. So same thing, you know, just started making noises, literally yeah. just like s- screaming weird shit, yep. waiting for people, my parents to leave and mm-hmm. or if people to leave and then just making noise. Yeah. You, know? you got to experiment with things, you know, it's like most of life is just about taking action and then deciding if that action you took did anything for you. And if it did, you just keep trying to do it over and over again right. until hopefully you surprise yourself and you're like, oh, wow, that was like the best I've ever done at this thing that mm-hmm. I'm trying to do. And then that gives you confidence and hopefully inspires you to keep wanting to do it. And then if you get bored, you go do right. other things. But like, that's just how I've always tried to live. It's like, 
I, I don't believe in like the idea of talent. I think there's people that are like mm. more likely to be like good at things, but I wouldn't call that like talent necessarily. I feel like a lot of the times people mistake talent for just hard work and just oh, people yeah. just doing stuff with their time. Cause like I was terrible at music and I got much better at it and like played shows and like had some success from it. Not like a crazy amount, but like enough where I'm like, Oh wow, this is crazy. It's like a thing I taught myself and it really just kind of turned into like my therapy and like my way of getting through life and stuff, you know, it's like super powerful tool for me, but I wouldn't say like I'm crazy talented at it or anything. Like I'm not like a savant, you know, I can't just play something by ear. There's people that are savants and then there's people that are like, just work really hard, you know? And I feel like that's kind of like the distinction. And like talent is kind of an excuse people use to not try almost. You know what I mean? It's like, For I sure. could never do this because I don't have any talent. It's like, yeah, you do. You do. You just need to right. keep working at it and keep failing, you know? I don't know. No, I, t- I totally agree. Yeah. Like, the I think the I've read something about how they're like to your point about some people are like predisposed to certain things and they have a leg up when they're born and shit. Like right. I have like, I, I had a piano in my house and my mom like gave, made us like all the kids take lessons and she grew up playing music. Right. So like I had a pre and I had uncles who were musicians and shit. So like I had a predisposition to music and you know, more than more so than someone that didn't have any instrument in their home that, you know, at least I had a piano you know right. and i could bang on it and like at least learn some things about it mm-hmm. but um so like and it's in a way yeah there's and i think it's you know it's in the it's in the genes too like some a little of bit it. right like and yeah. i was like in the womb like when my mom was performing and shit so mm-hmm. that's all gotta have some sort of like influence right. but to your point about a talent it's like um i read something that to be a grandmaster you know like once you hit an intermediate level, once everyone hits intermediacy or whatever, if that's a word, uh, talent ceases to matter. Like, mm-hmm. and then it's all matters of like how many hours, like how, right. how much time do you put into it? Right. And yeah, like, I'm not going to say like everything, like <laughs> the only reason why I'm making music all the time is because I'm making music all the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. It's like the only reason to you get, like I can do 34 podcasts is because I do 34 podcasts, you know, yep. and this one, this like, and it goes up and down. Things go well, things go poorly. Like you think, you know, things and th- then things fall apart. Yeah, man. I'm going through that right now like, with this, like, like this, this mic settings are still not good. Yeah. Well, that's just how it goes, you know? Um, but yeah, I've been feeling that lately just with COVID and trying to start a business this year. You know, it's been challenging this last month because some of the businesses i work with are you know closing temporarily and maybe they just don't feel completely confident trying to take on new products and then i'm meeting with advisors meeting with people that are trying to give me advice on where i should take my business and everyone has kind of a different idea and you know just trying to like really figure out you know all the the proper steps to take to move things forward but at the end of the day it's like if I fail at this, it's not going to ruin my life. You know, it's like a thing I'm trying to do that I'm passionate about, but it doesn't define me. You know, it's like I could go try to do something else and you know, follow the same steps, you know, that I did with the cookie business and just, sure. I always feel like it just kind of comes back to who you're being and like what it is that makes you like, kind of like, tick and like what inspires you to like want to keep living in general you know it's like for me it's like trying to learn new things all the time and trying to like work Mm -hmm. for myself and trying to like help people out you know as best as i can with the things that i do you know like because i start i started this cookie business which is it's called griffin's grain free goods Um, uh, and i started it just because you know i can't eat cookies like everyone else can so i had to like figure out a recipe that my body's like okay with and then i realized i was like well these are really good and a lot of people have problems with you know digestion and like you know suffer from different illnesses and stuff so i was like all right well now i'm just gonna bring these cookies to the people and i started driving uber and lyft and i already kind of was driving uber and lyft anyway but i realized that i could just sell the cookies in the car and like that's kind of how the business came to be was i found there was a demand for it people actually wanted 
to try them, wanted to eat them. So mm-hmm. I was like, oh, cool. And like that's most of life is just like, do you solve a problem for someone? Does what you're doing solving a problem? And if mm-hmm. it does and it's a good problem, then that, that's how you can get some success, you know. But you need to start with who you're being and like what yeah. about you makes what you're doing like the story behind it like unique and makes people be like oh wow like that's really interesting you know because it's not it's not just enough to just be like you know to wake up one day and just decide yeah i'm gonna be i'm just gonna become a really good juggler or something and like get really known for juggling it's like well why Mom. why do you want to be a juggler like what about you like has led you to this life they get all of the juggling ladies, that's why <laughs> Oh, that's a juggalo. Never mind. That's a juggalo. But well, they're the same, almost the same word, dude. Yeah. That's not by coincidence. <laughs> I don't know about all that, but. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, man. Actually, I think they're spelled totally differently, right? They're probably totally different words. Yeah. But. Yeah, one's an O, one's an AR. Creative Rhett. Do you know what that is? If, 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 do you know if juggalo is the same as gigolo? And what are those words those in German? Those are the words that are very similar. Yeah. Oh, not juggalo. Sorry, juggler. <laughs> juggler. That's it. Juggler and gigolo. <laughs> uh, but no, dude, I totally, I totally, a hundred percent, like all you, what you just said, like, I think I try to tell that to as many people as I can, as much, as early as possible, like in their life to know that what they need to follow is what makes them happy per se. Like right. that's the follow your bliss, Joseph Campbell thing, or the like Wu Wei in Taoism is like the effortless work, the things that like you just love to do. So all that work right. just seems just effortless. And it starts to, it's, mm-hmm. it's what you, I mean, you just said it. It's like, find the, pa- the, the passion that you have and then find a purpose for you know and then find the intersection between yep, it like right. find find Take how the action right especially with those two things yeah. especially if the purpose is i mean for me and i think yourself too is the you know i don't want to speak for you but correct me if i'm wrong but it's to find you know how how to make an impact in a greater scale right yes. like yes. by by failing and learning yourself and like making those and moving forward with your purpose back and fueled with your passion for the ultimate goal to have a better fucking world. Right. Like yeah, it's dude. the goal. Like exactly. for, I think everyone, but it comes from the work that you got to do in that work, mm-hmm. right. That out those hours, yep. passion is beautiful, but if you're passionate about something that's harmful or, <laughs> you know, I don't know, I'm sure there's plenty of people that are, and they would, yeah. and they're doing just fine in their lives. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, you know, who knows how the how the scales of fate, you know, tip. But uh, right. the, I think, uh, yeah, like cause I was thinking, like you said, this juggler. Like, why does he want to be a good juggler? Yeah, and that, that's, I mean, that's some the purpose, right? Like, yeah. what's the purpose of right. juggling? Yeah. What's exactly? So it's like. If you lose the purpose, what is the purpose of juggling? if you lose the purpose <laughs> for things along the way and like maybe you lose Balance. Your, your, your passion or whatever, you know, it's like, that's okay too, you know? And like life is about trying new things. Cause like, you know, I started a cookie business. Am I going to like running mm-hmm. a cookie business in a year? I think so, but I don't know. Cause no, it, until you try it. I don't know until I try, but the more things, try anything once. yeah, the more things you do with your life, the more you just kind of try to own the process and like try to just keep making things the more you start to understand who you are more and like that's what songwriting was for me in the first place was kind of my way of getting in touch with myself and like you know when i write words i like for lyrics and stuff i Mm -hmm. I don't like sit down a lot of the times and just write and then try to inject it it's like more like a freestyle i just kind of sing and then I respond to the sounds that I make and I'm mm-hmm. like, Oh, what am I trying to say? And it's like, yeah. And then when I finally wow. get it out and I finally figure out what I'm trying to say, like that <laughs> helps move me. It helps me move closer to the sense of understanding about myself or maybe a problem I didn't even know I had, or, you know, just like things that I should be doing and maybe I'm not doing them, but I know I should be doing them, you know? And it's like, and then that's mm. just a matter of, you know, just being aware and then, gradually trying to move toward that sense of you know being enlightened and you can enlighten yourself just just with your art just with your process and that's fascinating to me you know 
I don't need to read a book to feel enlightened. I can go write a song and right. learn so many things about myself just through that process. But it's like, it's a practice just like anything where it's like, you get practice, better at improvising sure. the more you improvise, right? So I was, yeah. I was shit at it for a while. <laughs> like, couldn't make any yeah, sense difficult. of what I was trying to say. But then one it's day, difficult. I like improvised these words and I was like, oh my gosh, this song's about my grandfather. And like, I was having this right. problem with like, you know, my grandfather, you know, basically committed suicide when I was like kind of young and I didn't know about it till I got older, you know, kind of thing. Sure. I might be oversharing, whatever. But that there was yeah. a moment in my life where I was just like, upset by it but i didn't know i was upset about it but then yeah. i was like improvising these words over the song that i was writing and then all the words came out and then i like wrote them down after i listened to the recording you know like i said listen back and then i wrote it down i was sure. like oh my gosh i'm like writing this song about my grandfather this is crazy and then once i knew what the song yeah, was about amazing. it was easier for me to then go in and then start to change the lyrics a little bit and then i could go in and write it but it came from this place of just like my unconscious, you know? So a hundred percent. And that's, what's like, that's why I like writing and like making stuff. And sometimes that inspiration doesn't come. You try to like improvise something and it's just, you just don't have it that day. So you just like, right. well, just put that on the shelf and come back to it. And maybe you never make anything of it, but it's like, it's the practice, you know? So, yeah, that, that's yeah that's interesting where you put it where it, that's that's how i'll do it too when i'll i hear a melody in my head or more so more so i don't really i'll hear something sometimes and i'll hear it sometimes i'll hear it like i'll, mm -hmm. I'll like hear an instrument like perfectly coming through and ever since i was a kid i was like i could i could hear like the or orchestration of something in a song mm -hmm. i would like hear other instruments and be able to like put a like ghost yeah, sound yeah. Right. and like put superimpose you it could, over like, imagine what i could it imagine would be. It. and sometimes it, it's because sometimes the resonance or like sometimes when instruments clash or like when i sing a certain note it'll sound like another instrument and then that'll like make me hear yeah. it and then i'll be like oh shit i need that instrument in there right yeah uh, yeah but i feel like a lot of a lot of the stuff comes out more when i hear i hear i'll hear like a a melody maybe or like a scale or i'll hear something and then i'll sing um and but when i'm singing it all goes when it's like really it really spur of the moment really improv like really in that moment like it's treacherous sometimes but sometimes it, like it's it's just like that you like work through it and things will come out of nowhere and, yeah and it'll be like whoa and all this stuff's right. coming through you and you just kind of roll with it but you have to like you have to let it be, but also be able to know how to, how to like move it. Yeah. Because as soon as you start like over analyzing, it's gone. Or it, it's, it's that's like, why I try to record yeah. everything that I like when I'm having those sessions, I record it and then I can go back and I can take different takes and yeah. be like, okay, so take one. I really liked what I did here. Mm -hmm. They're not even words at this point, but they're like beats right. and there's like tonality and there's like a movement, there's a melody maybe or something. Sure. And then like the third take wow i like it here and then you just put it all together and like but i know what you mean about hearing things like i i purposefully will like write the music for a while and then i just listen to like an instrumental version of the song and then hmm. i'll just like just let it simmer and yeah i'll just good. like think about stuff or i'll just hum along to it and then i'll start coming up with ideas and then i'll have a session where i just try to like sing yeah the stuff. more the more it's in your subconscious that some i don't know sometimes it like you get it in there Sometimes you can over, at least for me, I can overhear things over and over and over and I'll like lose inspiration because I'm just so yeah. obsessed with the same thing. And then I get stuck in that, um, mm -hmm. but you can get out of it. But I feel like what you're saying about starting with just the like sounds and tonality and like, like that's how I'll do it too. Just coming up with like melodies or something. Sometimes I will just record me just singing whatever comes whatever i feel should be over it yeah. because i'm so much more precise and better and free yeah like because i don't have like you're saying too like the improv like singing and rapping that's totally another level of like practice and skill that i just don't have i'm getting better at improv with my live streams i'm getting better yeah. Yeah. i'm getting better at it but I still have a lot more hours to do oh yeah i but I, in the moment i feel you yeah in and, the moment i can right. i can do it on pen and paper and i can like 
I can write poetry. I can write right. and rhyme and I can write meter and it can come out pretty quick when I'm in it. Yeah. But like it has to be written and I have to like think. And like as I'm writing, I'm still thinking about the next one. Whereas when you're in it, it's like you got to th- like you got to be already two steps ahead when I'm still like trying right. to get to the next step. Yeah. You know, and I feel like the only time I've ever really been able to improv like super well in a live setting was. Uh, I played with this uh, band called Frenia, and it was like this attic show. Oh, I know Frenia. Yeah, and yeah, you've played with them before too in that same attic, I'm sure, right? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Right. Uh, Ryan was in the Comrades for a little bit. Oh, okay. I didn't even realize that. Yeah. That's right. Right now, that's great. We shared the uh, Frenia and, and I shared the same uh, rehearsal space. Mm-hmm. Um, got to know those guys real, real well. Yeah. Paul, Paul, and Pedro yeah. joined later. Yeah. I, I really Paul, like their music, Pedro, man. Yeah. I really like, Oh, they're great. And that yeah, was the only yeah. time I ever felt like totally I, I really nailed Dude. like an improv. They asked me to come on and just improvise something for their last song at this attic show. And then Kyle Kanowski ended up coming up and doing harmonies. And I just like saying, oh, I might've been there. I just sang this thing. Thing that I came up with like in the moment and I don't even remember what it was because yeah. it was just stream of conscious just like but it was like the most moving thing I've ever felt like a part of for sure musically and you, everyone in the room knew that I was improvising but I made sense like my words made sense and I like touched people and this guy came up to me after the show he like grabbed my head <laughs> and he like pulled it close to his like, and he was like crying and I swear like, it was the only time I yeah, ever dude. felt like That's I intense. really like got to someone's like soul with a performance or something and it was just because so real. I practiced that but I'm not to the point where I can just do it all the time but in that moment it was just perfect you know? people can feel amazing. that man they they resonate with mm-hmm. that because that's that's the beauty of singing and like performance is when you are in that and you can like yeah just imagine like like I could only imagine like I mean that that's that's a beautiful feeling right to connect as a performer oh my god I'll never forget that feeling like wow of just like like connecting with someone like and you through well, practice yeah you putting it out there and then like reciprocating and like showing you that hey yeah i feel that too yeah you know like that's a that's a that's in the best feeling i think for honestly it was for any artist yeah i still yeah. like i can still go back to that moment and feel that energy and feel like it's gonna be a lot of feel pride, its warmth yeah a lot of pride a lot of connection a lot of yeah. like yeah but does i hope they put on some well I was going to say, <laughs> there's no shows really going on now, but yeah. I, yeah, Virtual I, I really dig Frania, man. They're, they're, oh, uh, yeah. they're, I know, I don't even know if they exist anymore or if they're still doing stuff, but I, I, the first couple albums that came out, like blew me away because I would play with them too. And I, I feel the same way. Like when I would, I jam with them a couple of times, like, uh, on the keyboard, uh, on the guitar, uh, because they're just always hopping around different instruments and just yeah. making noises. That's what was so great about it, because every time you'd see yeah. them play, it was a different set, and they didn't even know what was going to happen either, which was really cool. It was just like, just their whole thing. So that was like, I feel like they had, I'm, I'm not sure if this is right, but I feel like they kind of oh, had... Oh, shit. We they just had, got like, an themes. explosion of beer and love. Uh, beer What's love. up, Madafukata? Madafukata. I love beer and love. Well, I don't love beer, but I love love. Madafukata, are you... Uh, in Istanbul, but uh, when when we were when we were there, well, I don't know I just remember playing the same type of kind of not the same. I wasn't. It was a closed like jam just with us. It right. wasn't an audience, but um, I felt that same way. I was so free in those jams, dude. Yeah, like I had never been that free in my life. Like maybe when I'm jamming with some jazz people because they don't fucking care. No, that's the whole point. Right? And I'll and some of them will just be like, "Oh shit!" Like I swear to God, dude. Like I go, I don't know anything about music theory. These guys know, like they know all their scales. They know all their shit. I know a few scales, but I just like go like up uh, fucking like half yeah. steps at a time, or I'll figure yeah. out the scale. It'll take me a while, and then yeah. and then I'll do some I'll do something, but I'm more focused on rhythm 
like the things that I can control, right? It's like, right. okay, I don't know these all this theory, but I can feel these yeah. certain like grooves pretty easily. Right. You get to know what the intervals are, and you can kind of like yeah. be like, all right, I can play these three they're, notes. And they're not, yeah, they're not so usually I can doing probably crazy shit in jams. Play, yeah, it's right. still usually two or three chords. It's yeah. Yeah, um, but it's, if someone to play the hardest jams I've ever been in my life, dude, are was in Ireland with the with the um the traditional people like playing the Irish trad music. It was, it was, I didn't know what the fuck was going on, dude. Like they're all in like seven, eight, nine, eight. Yeah. Like they're all, and there's all these like rules. And then there's all the, there's tons of chord changes, but well, at least the guitarists were doing tons of chord changes, but mm-hmm. there were still, there were still uh, like modulating between two, tonic notes right and so it was like i was able to like at least hold on the time signature alone would like throw me off so yeah i mean (laughs) it it's it's weird man that that was definitely the hardest you had a cookie you know oh shit yeah what kind of cookies are these dude it's a peanut butter chocolate maple oh shit oh you're combining them now well they all have maple in them so i put Uh, maple in like the title for most of the cookies just because it's like the basis for it them. smells fucking delicious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, no, I'm, I have a friend in Istanbul. I am from Turkey. It is close. The person I'm talking about, Tanberic, I heard you from her last year. Yeah, man. I remember. I know Tanberic. Thanks for coming in. So what is the... What are these, like, white... It's the almonds. That's almond? Mm-hmm. Oh, I think I asked you that before. If I wanted to, I could probably sift the almond flour. Traditionally, right. like, flour sifted, but I just like that there's a little bit of chunks in it. kind of creates no, a I different mouse. I'm just curious. Yeah. It's good. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, hey, hey, Lauren. We're eating um, John's cookies. Yeah. John's got a business called My Cookie. Well, it's called Grain Griffin's Grain Free Goods, and we're we're eating some special recipes where you can buy us cookies. Ggfg dot online. Yeah, Jinx. that's it. They owe me a cookie. I do. It's right there. <laughs> yeah, so I started the cookie business largely during quarantine, and right now I've just been focusing on trying to get them into some stores, but mostly try to get it online. I'm working on trying to do a rebrand. I want the packaging just to look better. I want it to be set up more online where you can like subscribe every month if you want and you get a box of cookies sent to your door and like make it cheaper for the subscription and just try to have more like tiered pricing. And I have a meeting coming up this Tuesday to kind of talk with uh, the person that's going to help me with the branding efforts. Bum, and bum, bum. Right. We'll see what happens. <laughs> I might even change the name. It's called My Cookie right now, but I've been getting some feedback and some people don't like My Cookie. It makes them think of My Pillow or something, which mm. I just like it cuz it's like it's My Cookie, you know, like you can have one and I put two in a pack, so it's like I like My Cookie. The, the product is about like sharing, but it's like funny cuz it's called My Cookie cuz I give you two cookies, you know. But yeah, My oh, Cookie. That's what it's supposed to be. I don't know. I feel like the, I don't really know if it's about sharing, but it's called my cookie. That's that in the, in, t- in the culture that we live in. That's not. I know because f- everyone's like, that's my prop. That's my cookie. That's I like know. I'm a kid. My cookie. Right. 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 But I do give you two cookies, so that's where there's a little bit of a disconnect with the name. Hmm. And people actually have thought that there's hmm. only one cookie in the package, but I'm like, no, there's two. Yeah, that's different. So that's totally different. Uh, I don't know. Part of me wanted to be like, well, and they're soft. That's my favorite part. Yeah. That's my favorite part. So yeah, they're, they're Lego my cookie. Right, exactly. It's mostly just like like waffles. Like that's that's what we're doing. We're eating waffles. Yeah, it's just maple free syrup. Says, Alm- almond flour is the best gluten free, and that's the thing about these cookies is that they're vegan and gluten free. Because I I avoid gluten as much as I can too. Mm-hmm. And so these are great. Mm-hmm. I've, yeah, they're vegan, grain free, gluten free, paleo. And yeah, they're all maple syrup based. So that's like mm. kind of, like originally the name came from Mukuki 
maple, like a maple cookie. Hmm. And I just shortened it to my cookie. And then I changed it to my cookie. And now I'm going to change it to something else again. I don't know. But that's the thing when you start things... Hmm. You just hear what people have to say. It's like, I made this business, but I didn't make it for me. I made it for other people. So if the majority of people don't like the name, I'm going to change it, right? Yeah, what do you guys think? Do you guys have any good names for cookies? Say it in the comments. Thanks for all your comments. Yeah. Kekske? Kekse? That, damn it, Stephen. I can't speak German. Or is that is that what juggler is? I don't know. Kicks. Maybe that's what cookie is. And... Or, that, or is that not a German word? I'm not sure. I don't know. Don't know German. Oh, it could be cookie. Could be. It looks kind of like cookie, right? It does kind of look like cookie. Maybe I just name it the German. Like... Yeah, it's cookie in German. Okay. He's right. <laughs> you were so right. That's what I should just call the product. It'll just be cookie, but it'll be in German. And then I feel like that's know. a really difficult thing for people to pronounce. I know. With the K-E-K-S-E. To right. keep them on their toes, you know. But I like KK, right? Because isn't that uh, isn't that lol in uh, um, South Korea? I don't know, man. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with yes. <laughs> I think it's like ha 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 ha. ha. It's like ka 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 ka. Oh, like ka 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 ka. I thought that was like a Popeye thing or something like. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. No, the kick, <laughs> the German frog arrives. Oh, someone's head is bouncing around on the screen. It's pretty good. Yeah, there's an emote wall. Whenever anyone puts an emote, yeah, that's where those love and beer came from. Those they just splashed on the emote wall. It's great. But yeah, my point was, you know, with the whole, you know, business, it's like. I understand that things are going to change with it. And uh, I ultimately just want to make the best product with the best name that I can. And when I started it, I had to think of something, right? So it's like, well, this is the name, but it doesn't mean it's always going to be the name. And hmm. I'm so small right now that if I end up having to change things, even in the next couple months, I'm not going to be too concerned about it. Because as long as the product tastes good, I just want a name that goes like, that's as good as the cookies taste, hopefully. Like, that's the idea. Right. I mean, if people cookie. don't like my cookie overall, and I do some, you know, like, testing of that, and I, you know, get a good, like, amount of people to give me their feedback, then I can be like, okay, well, maybe, yeah. maybe it should be something else. I don't know. I feel like people get really caught, caught up on names and shit and stuff, too. And it's easy to overlook and just be obsessed with the, like, I feel like the something that might be analogous to that is when people start a band it's like they people will argue and obsess more about the name of the band than the music than itself. the actual music right. and like they won't even practice they'll just be spending all the time focusing like well we can't be a band unless we have a name right yeah it's and like, which well, is totally not just... true because like i've been a band but i've played shows without lyrics for songs where it's just literally just me making sounds would I not play the show just because the words aren't done? No. Because, mm. like, no one knows what the words are anyway. So it's, like, it doesn't really... You know what I mean? I feel like at some point it's just, like, that's just kind of, just like, a distraction, you know? And, like, people should just right. be focused on making the art, you know? Yeah, what's first in the cookie business? What your cookie's named or right. what your cookie is? Right. And for me, it was making it taste good, and then mm -hmm. everything came after that, so... But originally the business was called Baking Against the Grain, and I loved that name. Yeah. But... Unfortunately, it's copyright infringement, so had to change the name, and now I'm like, yeah, now I'm thinking maybe I should just focus on cookies. What if you change the gluten against the grain? Or no? <laughs> just gluten. Against it? What about just against the grain? That's what the copyright's for, and the fact that uh, I put the modifier up front, the baking against the grain, still technically was hmm. violating because it wasn't different enough i guess i feel like if i had more money i could have fought it but it's like you know i, you know, I right. can't go up against this like pick your battles yeah the, right i'd only been in business for two months so i was like well <laughs> these people from vermont really don't want me using this name people from vermont are nice these people weren't very nice <laughs> intimidation <laughs> tactics yeah in america very threatening what about my cookies. That doesn't happen. I know. In the cookie business? I'm just trying to sell cookies, cookies to people. Cookies? It's like Louis Nabisco? B. Nabisco? Yeah. They're just the nicest people. They're, they're amazing. The Keebler elves? They, say they keep our rainforest safe. 
Yep. That's what I hear. They're basically you right now. They're basically gods. I don't know. Let's like let's. <laughs> I think we should probably all convert. Mm. Well, I'm pretty well. Nabisco, right? Doesn't the Nabisco and every all that? Diabetic gods, maybe, but that's about it. <laughs> I mean, there's yeah. a lot. There's gods of good and evil, man. Right. What are some of your favorite gods, Ian? I'm sure you have some. I wonder who the cookie god would be, though, for real. The god of bakers. The good god is Dionysus. Dionysus is a dope god. Mm. God of wine. Apparently they would... uh, And he was also um, scattered into like a million pieces. He's like... And like represents chaos and shit. Yeah. But... And also wine... Do you drink too much wine? Is that why? Is that... Um, no, no. I've just been reading more about him because apparently Nietzsche like was obsessed with him. Same with like, yeah, and there's been a bunch of people that throughout history that have essentially just obsessed over dying or like worshiped him, I guess. Like that's what the thing about gods, when you have favorite gods, that's, I mean, take it's it slippery, one step further and then, then it's worshiping, you know? And that's what the, like the gods, the gods of ancient times are more like the, the site, like they represent the psyche of, you know, so like what you choose to worship is what you choose to spend, you know, to like, uh, what you choose to spend your, or what you choose your perception of reality to be, right? right? Like what archetypes you, do you subscribe to the things that you want to see more of, or the things that you want to live in the world is the the uh those gods that you look at and yep. that's what i mean that's like what mythology is and, right and people think when you're in the religion you think oh this is a religion this isn't myth the mythology mythology is myth the myth isn't true it's right. like well that's not how it that's, works yeah, it's I mean, not what religion is too. it's not well, it's not whether it's true or not like that's not the point like no like, yeah it's that belief system that you have and it's, it's the stories that you that it's the sto- yeah the belief system and, and the stories would, that you tell yeah. and you listen to and how you digest it and how you view yourself through those stories yeah it's through a lens essentially yeah. like the lens of religion and i feel like when i was younger and i believed in religion more i did kind of feel this like safety in my religion where i didn't feel sure. like I don't know. I felt like no matter anything that happened to me, there was always like this bigger power that was mm-hmm. going to like help me out. And like, there was something really just like reassuring about that. Definitely. And you know, as I've gotten older and you know, I'm not as religious, I can tell that, you know, when things do get really hard, it's like, it's, it would be nice if I believed in God cause I'd be able to like reach out to like that kind sure. of, but I don't do that. So instead I have to find other things that kind of, you know, are that for me. And I feel like music sure. has become like, a religion in a way like a quasi religion where oh yeah it's definitely. like what i look to instead so for sure it's I think a lot of it's kind do. of interesting to think about in that term is like music being a religion but so depending see, on who you are i feel like it's like especially in the east it's more of a mindset there because it's like part of their everyday life and it's more part of just like their daily practice i mean how I they ar- connect I would with argue themselves most america most people especially in america they listen to music every day yeah but you wait you said uh but i guess how many of them like actually think of it as a religion and like they, actually have that in their head as like uh you know, you know what i mean like, and, like the fish it's I've, interesting i've met some deadheads that it's 100 percent religion right <laughs> well those people for sure not i mean <laughs> dude i went to a hosier show at in the rave yeah. when, you know like a year ago and it felt like a fucking it felt like felt like what people were there for. They went to like get some purpose and some sense yeah. and to gather in a communion with other people through the fucking mm-hmm. what this guy has some shit to say. You know, he's got yeah. that mystical fucking Irish vibe, and people people just like be like, oh my god, he's Let's he's him. a he's a he's a fairy. Yeah. But but you said uh, you said that you don't what or you said you don't believe in God. What God don't you believe in? I mean, I was raised uh, mm. to be Christian. Yeah, you like you, that. You hit the lemon hint on yeah, that one. Yeah, dude. I made I made those uh, in the These kitchen yesterday. These are extra yesterday. soft. Yeah. Is that because they're fresh? Um. Well, they're always going to be soft, but as they as they go through time, you know, they do I harden harden up a little bit. But I guess I'm used to eating your 
your your discards. <laughs> yeah, well, you normally eat the cookies that have been sitting around a little bit longer. So this is amazing. Yeah, yeah. I also I changed the recipe ever so slightly to make. I it. remember the first time I did this. This is definitely softer. Yeah, yeah. I'm always improving, you know. Oh. But but yeah, as far as God, um, I don't know. My parents would change the religion that we followed like every year. I feel like I don't know. So I was like, hmm. I was Christian, and then. I was uh, like a Lutheran for a second, I think, and then a mm-hmm. Protestant kind of thing. Or I don't, I don't even really know <laughs> the differences of like what all the religions are because there's so many. And it's, well, those are all Christian, right? There were different sects of Christianity, but my mom would like, right? Isn't that isn't that I think is that Lutherans true? Lutherans are also Protestants. They are okay. See, I don't really know anything about religion, so but I believed in God when I was a kid, and then I didn't anymore. And I just just felt very confused by it. I kind of felt like people kind of can use religion as a way to not take accountability mm. for their own lives. And they kind of are like, well, it's God's will. It's like, well, you have will too. You know what I mean? So it's like at some point you have to just take control of your own life and do the things, take I the action. I feel the same way. I mean, I grew up in a Christian household, but Catholic, which isn't. Which is like when people say Protestant, they usually mean like the Reformation. Like Protestants were like the people that when Catholic split oh, and there was right. a Reformation. Mm-hmm. Protestant is kind of like a generic. There's there it is something more specific, but it's usually the way that I usually hear it or use it is everything that's not Catholic right. but still Christian. So like Baptists or Protestants, like Lutherans or Protestants, Episcopalians or Protestants. As far as I know, I might be wrong, mm. but. Um, and Catholics and Protestants are all, both Christians, right. right? And Christianity, Christians and Jews and, and so Mus- Muslims are also, they're all like come from the same thing and they all come from other shit, dude. And they, the stories just keep changing. It's just all and, astrology. Let's just be, let's just be <laughs> the, real. It's, yeah. I mean, it <laughs> kind, of, kind of goes down to some like, yeah, basically the stories that people would tell generation after generation. Spot the stars, to, man. To try to like, uh encode essentially like teach people this how like when you know those stories and you look up at the sky and you find one of the people you can see and you can look and you can know what's happening or you can know the movements of them and you, yeah. like if you're you it's a code it's just like yeah. a mnemonic a giant mnemonic right <laughs> but uh no i hear you man and i, I feel the same way like don't even know what god that is that they worship that that's what they're worshiping it's confusing like as a kid it's just like i don't even know what you guys are saying like and so i don't yeah. believe it because it doesn't sound like even you guys even know what the right. fuck you're talking about exactly and then so then all it is what you're describing like i could feel for me maybe i was projecting that i could feel the same feelings that i had growing up was just so many hypocrites just all hypocrisy yep which is like it's fine to be a hypocrite but like when you're I, I don't know. Maybe it's not fine to be a hypocrite, but like, it's, it's not, not as, I would forgive you more maybe, but like when you're the holier than thou person and then the hypocrite, like that's just as a double whammy right. for me. And it, it really, right. I lose respect for, and for, for me. You. I was kind of fortunate in the sense that my parents cared about religion, but as we got older, it became less of a priority for them. We started going yeah. less and less and yeah, it wasn't like, you know, going to ruin my family by me being like, I don't want to go do this anymore, which for some people it does, yeah, you know, yeah. and like that's what's so crazy. And like, I feel like that's really where the hypocrisy comes in because it's like, oh, yeah, dude, I, I, I was I didn't ruin my life. Didn't ru- get ruined. But I I was like, I remember basically protesting and being like, I'm not going to church. I don't believe in it. I'm like reading Emerson, you know, and being like, this is much better. Like. And my my mom would, she would, my mom and dad would both be like, well, if you're not going to go, then you're going to be ground. I'm like, I'm standing up for what I believe in here. I'm and I'd like stay in my bed. I'd be like, do what you want. Like, I'll stay here all day. Like, right. uh, you want to lock me in my room? Fine. Right. You know, I'll use your religious symbolism against you and be, could be a martyr, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. or whatever, you know, or, you know, and it, and it's a. They respected it, but it was still really, really young, and they were still just like, "No, we're all going to church." Yeah. Um, and then they threatened to like restrict my computer privileges or something. Of course, of course. And I was like, 
like it's and i was always on the computer like i was learning how to program and put like i basically had i basically like had set up the computer for my mom set up the computer for the other the whole family i managed all the computers so i was like you're gonna take me off the computers yeah you won't be able to use them either <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, i'll just go accidentally change something you know <laughs> yeah, 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 no yeah. i never did that but it kind of reminds me like what we're talking about reminds me of this episode of this tv show called easy have you seen that yet Mm-mm. so i don't watch tv too often well there's it's this show it's on netflix maybe people that are listening in um know what i'm talking easy. about but yeah the show is called easy and there's this episode in particular where there's this girl and she gets in trouble because she has like a guy over after school or something and she's not supposed to and you know whatever she's being a teenager and then uh, her parents come home catch them and then her punishment is that she has to go to church with the family every Sunday for the next six weeks or something. So what she does, she uses uh, the re- like re- the religion to basically call her parents out. And like mm-hmm. she starts being like really involved with the church. She's going above and beyond. She starts bringing homeless people home to feed them and give them stuff. And her parents are like <laughs> coming home and they're like, what? <laughs> Like, That's who's this? Funny. Who are these people in the house? And she's it's like, like oh, well, we want to be Christian, not that Christian. Yeah, we have all these we have all these things that aren't being used. We don't and these people want to help the poor. They're ourselves. hungry and they don't have clothes. So yeah. Yeah. I thought that's what being a Christian is. And then their parents are just like, oh, like, you don't need to go to church anymore. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so it kind of like goes into the that whole hypocrisy funny, yeah. thing where it's like, well, you know, you got to like, you got to live by your words. You can't just like have empty words and then not actually like fall through with it so right and i think we have more options i think we have more options than our parents generation at least it seems like because like i feel as if my parents would have never had an opportunity to be like yeah I'm not, i don't want to go to church if they did they would get the shit beat out of them oh yeah like, definitely. literally literally yeah. the shit beat out of them yeah. and so for me it was like i put up a fuss and they were just like well and they probably in their heart knew, agreed too. And like, and that's what I could feel. And that's why it's hard for them to, that's why it's hard for like, I feel like the boomer generation to really, to really, well, I'm speaking generally. I'm sure there's very devout people who, you know, act, do say they're what they believe and do, do act as if they, you know, they're devout people who, you know, right. even if they, what they believe I might not agree with, like they live by that. Um, but I feel like for the, with that generation, it's just, at least for Catholics in America, it's just especially, it's just this thing. I could feel it in church. That's what I say. Like, not just my family. I could feel it in the congregation. I was with, people are there to just like be there. There yeah. are few people who are very devout and they're all in, but like, it's like a more of a guilt thing. They're yes, like, oh, well, exactly. Sunday I got to go to church the now. Guilt, yeah. yeah. And it's like, and I think like, and so that's what I'm saying is like, I feel like we have more options maybe now because I could Oh, read, we definitely I could do. read books, all these books. I could go to the library and read all these books. I could go online and like mm-hmm. learn about Eastern religions and learn about all these different types of religions and figure that out and be like, and start exploring yep. it. And then also knowing about the history of the church and like being, knowing all that stuff. And I feel like it, as we've gone through time, like the whole nurture element of our, you know, family ties kind of, it kind of went a little bit you had your bubble like you know 50 Mm -hmm. years ago like this is what life is this is what you know and you're kind of in that bubble and then you're able to be nurtured however your parents want you to be but as Mm -hmm. time's gone on we've had all these expanses in technology and right the The globalists right so now it's like common now we have this opportunity to like know right everything at all times and have as many sorts of interactions as we want or as much knowledge that we want to put into our brain, we can do that. So I feel like that is really like our technology is really like allowed that to happen. And then how your parents nurture you changes them because you can call them out and be like, well, I read this mm-hmm. thing here or like, you know, and like there's a lot more experiences that can be had in a shorter period of time than, you know, a yeah. hundred years ago, even when, you know, you had to just read everything and, you had to be able to read in the first place. So it's like, you know, it's like right. it's streamlined everything. Dude, that's so. a great point because I remember when after um, Columbine, mm-hmm. my mom and like my mom read these articles about how video games were the reason, you know, that this shit happened. And we were playing 
Doom and shit. Like, it's fun, you know, like super fun game. And she was terrified, like, because she read these articles and stuff and, like, was all, like, getting on me to be like, these games aren't good. You shouldn't play these games or something. I was like, what? I was like, you're talking about these, cr- it's like, some crazy people in Colorado or, or where's Columbine? Uh, or wherever it was. Uh-huh. In Columbine, like, I don't know, like, I've, I've read more. I told her, I remember the first thing I thought of was, I've read more brutal books than this. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you don't care about me reading the, I could be reading the craziest fucking violent books and be like, oh, he's reading books, you know, because, but I think it was just like a scary scare thing. But then I remember looking, I like, I remember doing a persuasive speech or some essay or something. And I looked in and I did research into video games mm-hmm. and I talked to, and then, yeah. And I brought that to my mom. I was like, Hey, like these articles and these things, like you can't trust this stuff. Here's the actual evidence like that video games uh, are good for you right? well that it's i mean obviously too too much of anything too, yeah. is bad right but but like they are it's good for mm. your cognitive development yeah especially when you're young like it's it you know being you problem can, solving all, it comes with baggage right like of maybe you could be addicted to them and you yeah know, with, and you could addicted to too stuff. much of a anything right yeah. but th- if you think about games like i don't know if you heard of like league of legends or dota or whatever mm. like these are these are like insanely advanced like games that humans have ever seen. Like these are, this, that's the way I look at it. It's like something like League of Legends is the most complicated um, team game I think ever made. And the mo- and at the, and it, it's the most epic thing too. Cause it's like world, it's a global thing. Right. It's a global thing. And, everyone's coming together and you have two teams and they all have different options. It's just like crazy strategy where they're all, it's all live and they're doing these crazy simulations of deciding decisions and using magic to like beat each other and stuff like doing these spells and like, and we have control over these simulations and stuff. And so we can alter the games. And I just think it's a very, it, it's high. It's, I think it's more high level than a lot of like intensity amount of uh sport and i think that something like that is definitely super important for critical like skills learning and simulation like simulations are part of how everyone learns shit right yeah so that's just what this is what games are they're just they're just simulations Mm -hmm. for like real life shit um granted you know you also could play games like basketball or soccer or whatever those are also like pretty complicated games and they also require um physical so like it's more holistic i think but because but if you're t- if you're an esports athlete i guess they're called athletes now yeah but that's what i hear if you're an esports athlete and uh you want to be competitive you can't just be a fat lazy fuck like you have to be your mind has to be sharp and for your mind to be sharp you have to be physically fit yeah. you know so yeah. that that's i think one of the more difficulties i would imagine in esports is to like mm-hmm. is to have that physical gotta wake nature. up get your you know your workout yeah, in get your wheaties you know do some push-ups <laughs> yeah just getting there. fire up the the playstation uh <sighs> do some yoga while it boots up get ready no yeah i feel i feel like you're right you know it's definitely every every game that i've played i feel like has definitely helped me along the way i mean i feel like there's some games that aren't as beneficial as others you know like yeah the hours i spent playing wolfenstein as a kid which wolfenstein uh i played uh the return to castle wolfenstein it was like one of the original it was like on the pc like way back with like the original we were like playing against bots sometimes where it's like really fun because they're not even real people you know i think wolfenstein was the first 3d uh, multiplayer game ever i think it was too yeah yeah and i played id, it dude, a lot it was a lot of fun. and id software or the to- michael carmack or whatever, or i think his name is john carmack i forget what his name is what well, something like that yeah. he he released the fucking uh networking engine for like uh for people to join open source he, he created, he created. That's so cool. He just, he was the first, he just made it and he gave it. And then all of a sudden it just like online gaming exploded. It was like super advanced. All of a sudden now every game could, yep. everyone could work and play online with these shitty ass fucking connections mm. and like still do shit and like still like, right. that's insane. Yeah. Like, 
and he just open sourced it. You know, that's the beauty of that motherfucking shit, dude. Like I fucking love it and return to castle wolfenstein I mean, wolfenstein 3d i think might have been the first one and that yeah i played a uh, wolfenstein enemy territory for so long okay that that one i played as well so i think that was the one i played the most actually so that was world war ii right mm-hmm. there was no zombies and yeah, shit. it was yeah, just yeah. It was like up. axes it was like call it, yeah yeah it was fun as fuck, dude. Dude, it was, addict- it was like the most addicting game. I play I that like- game all the time. I learned a bunch of German. And then you there. can like talk with people <laughs> like you did. Yeah. I uh, I don't know. I, 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 really, mean, I really enjoyed it. And there was different Granada. guilds. There was guilds you could Mach join. Schnell. Mach and- Schnell. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good time. Um, Wunderbar. And then I got into World of Warcraft. <laughs> and uh, World of Warcraft. That's what Ladragi says. He's a... He's, uh, Oh, League of Legends expert. I thought you said World of Warcraft expert. Ladragi is a League of Legends expert, huh? Do you think I should play some League of Legends and stream it? Let's do that right now. Dude, World of Warcraft, though, I played that for a little bit. It's It was too much, man. It's like, too much. I, I felt agree. like it was my other life, and then I eventually just wanted to live in that world. Because that game requires really... you yeah. to be to like give up your life pretty much yeah and then and it's, pay them and then to yeah. like live in that world which right. is crazy yeah and i wasn't nearly as good as everyone else was at it so like i got to like level 60 and i was like man oh you made it all the way to 60 damn you went the whole way mm-hmm. how long did that take it took a while it's like, like a year no i played a lot so it was like oh, okay like three or four months or something just yeah. three four months straight every day i just played it a lot yeah, yeah. <laughs> i made it to level 20 and i could never make it past that i was i was just like all of a sudden every the grind like started gr- growing yeah. exponentially it's like oh instead of leveling up in one day now you have, now you have to work five times as hard and you can level up in a week just right. like what yeah i I was also guilty of that. I would start a lot of new characters. Yeah. I would get to like twenty, and I'd become be like, a... "I'm kind of bored of playing this paladin. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna yeah. become a druid now. I'm gonna try to be a druid." And then I would go do that for a while, and yeah, yeah. I always was starting new characters, and I had like my friend who was like really good at the game. And that's all about if you have friends. I think it's more fun. Like I had some mm-hmm. friends who did it, but they were super into it. But like, I think that's how a lot of people get into it. Is yeah. they have friends do, that are in it, and then that's fun when it was fun yeah yeah when you're with them in there and you're with friends and i think that's why people like it yeah you're mm. you're in this other world but everyone's in a chat room usually like when you're at a certain level people come together in guilds or whatever yeah. and they're chatting and they're fucking and having a jolly old time like i i can't play games on my own now but i can pl- i can uh i like just because i just i love that connection i have with other people when we're playing it's so fun yeah no, so, yeah, I, maybe I agree. maybe Ladraga, you're gonna have to teach me some League of Legends. You have to play some. I have some other friends and cousins who play, um, but but it's an investment, right? And to get good at it, it's like yeah, exactly. Because yeah. that's uh, have you ever, have you ever seen League of Legends or ever played it? No. It's like there's five. like certain games that really just yeah. like I'm not a huge gamer. I had like you know the time where i played games. Oh, you know wolfenstein enemy territory yeah so like i played that you got the level 60 in world of warcraft that's a pretty yeah. that's a gamer badge i think i almost got to 70 because then they upped it to oh, yeah, like higher like it. yeah but it's fine like i think when you get level 60 I, you get an honorary gamer i guess i don't know i just never i was never a gamer like that where yeah, i yeah. you know it was for me what sucked was i got into gaming when i was a kid and I got an Xbox, and then two days later, the Xbox 360 came out. And I just, I was like, oh, I just, like, I thought I caught up to everyone. I was, like, going to mm. be relatable in school now, because I was like, but now it's like everyone's got this, you know. So I was always behind with, like, the trends. So that's just, like, and then, class shame or something? Kind of, in a way. I don't know. I, I would feel I that, know. too. My parents would be like, no, we can't afford those games. It's a waste of time. Are we going to do it? That? Yeah. And I would always, because we had, like, I remember... I remember we had all these games and stuff, and then my brother Leo like decided to sell them all in, but I was too young to stop it, and yeah. like, it was terrible. I remember it was tragic. I wish day. I just would have like played music day. more instead of like well, playing Halo I, or something. I, 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 I wish... played a lot. I played a lot, but then I switched. Like, sophomore or junior year in co- in high school, is when I f- when I like basically gave up gaming. Yeah, I was and, like junior yeah. when I kind of stopped playing more. It so sto- I stopped and I started doing music 
like way more often because i i don't know after my 2009 album so like i guess i hadn't been making music i did release my 2008 album that was the first one i like gave to people i had one in 2007 too that i had a few copies of that i gave to like five people or like 10 mm-hmm. people and then 2008 i would just burn the cd right put the name on it and then i would print out i would like print out the front and the back on a piece of printer paper and then i would fold the cd in the printer paper and then just take tape and tape the back so it was just like a little sleeve yeah free sleeve mm-hmm. and then uh then i would hand that to people this 2008 Smart. i handed it to more people like mm-hmm. and I had like 20 that That's I gave. That's how I did make CDs. Yeah. Day. Like, yeah I and then 2009, I don't think I gave it to any, or no, I went to college and then I had a, I used like an old beer, beer box or something and mounted a like thing to the outside of my door where I would just replenish CDs and people, people would could. come and just take the CDs and I would just replenish it with more. They weren't rewritable, right? So, no, oh, those are more did. expensive, man. I just want to make sure they weren't rewritable because, you know, don't want anyone just taking your content and erasing it and putting their own content Dude, so, on Someone which came. People would do, you know, back in the day when rewritable discs. So. Yeah, rewritable discs are expensive, but at least they were at the time. But, no, dude, when I, I remember the first show that I played with the comrades with the full band, like, well, like the full, first show that we booked to, like, oh my gosh, and like I promoted it and stuff. Uh, was at Bremen, of course. And people came, this guy came from Kenosha, shouts out to Dunzo. Uh, but he, Dunzo, this this guy from Kenosha came uh, and he had my 2009 CD for that, uh, that, that like I only gave to my freshman dorm room people. Like yeah. he had it. He, like, how he, did you get this? Yeah. He said he <laughs> got it from someone else. Like someone else gave it to him. They're like, they downloaded it on their computer. They're like, well, I don't it need the, it anymore. No, dude, a... It was the fucking paper thing. Oh, he actually had the, the actual whoa. physical fucking thing. That's cool. I was like, oh my God. And he brought it to the he show. Brought it. He wanted me to sign it. Nice. I was like, oh shit, dude. That, that, I was like, I could, that's only, I wonder how many more are out there or probably not. Maybe he's the only one. Maybe he collected them all and he has them all. Now. I hope he does. Yeah. That'd be nice. That'd be cool. But <laughs> no, yeah, that, that's, uh, the burning burning the CDs is a lost art now. No one will no one can appreciate that anymore. I don't even have it. Oh no, I have an external CD, like a USB DVD writer. Yeah. But I, I bought a Blu-ray of this movie. This guy Peter Joseph is this documentarian. He did a Zeitgeist series yeah, yeah, yeah. and Culture and Decline and wrote this the new human rights movement. Mm-hmm. He came up with this new, more avant-garde film where it's like documentary, but like in the fictional documentary it's like sci-fi fiction historical narrative i guess but you know what i mean where it's like like, i don't know if this is real but it maybe no it's pretty (laughs) clearly like fantasy when you look Uh at it it's just like basically conversations it's just basically his book of like it's just he just gets actors to like he just gets actor actors to read and talk about position like things that are happening analyzing today's society but from the future um and just having fake conversations between two people about how the monetary system works or what's the psychological implications of all these different sociological structures and stuff but i bought it and it was on blu-ray and then i once i bought it i was like why did i buy buy this blu-ray yeah (laughs) because i don't have a blu-ray player so i gotta watch it at my parents house because they have Right. PlayStation, yeah. which is a blue light player. Yeah. That was the first, you said you got the Xbox. Dude, I got the PlayStation two. That was the, that was the game that, that was the game system that I first got. That was like n- more new. Right. It didn't come out that day or that year, but I got it for Christmas. Remember it came out the, the year before, but I remember our, like coming to my parents Came my dad with a chart comparing a DVD player plus a game plus the PlayStation, the first PlayStation, plus some other thing. I basically did a price comparison and like argued that like a PlayStation 2 would save us money. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> if I, because my dad was like, 
I think he, he told me, he's like, you're going to have to like, give me a better pitch than that. You know, like you gotta, you gotta defend why you want this thing. Yeah. I was like, okay. Okay. Oh man. <laughs> it's nice that you actually got a pitch. Like my parents were always just like, Nope, we're not doing it. And then no, I did. They I would surprise me. Spreadsheet. They would surprise me and then sometimes buy the stuff. But well, that's, I, th- I was totally convinced I wasn't going to get it. Mm. I pitched it to them. I was totally convinced I wasn't going to get it. You show them your spreadsheet and everything. Well, yeah. I showed them a spreadsheet and everything. I was like, we would save hundreds of dollars in the long run. Like, you guys know you're going to get a DVD player someday. And I think that was the selling point. Because the DVDs were just starting to, like, become way more common. Right. And take over. Tape over? Take over tape. <laughs> I'm going to tape it over. Puns. puns, puns, puns. But I think that was the selling point. Because... uh they knew they needed that, so they might as well get the PlayStation. Mm-hmm. And my mom got it. I knew she was going out Christmas shopping, and I had this like feeling like, oh, my God. She's getting presents. I was like really excited about it for some reason. And she came in and like left the, left the stuff in the car. And as soon as I got a chance, I snuck out, looked, into the, looked like in the back window, saw a fucking playstation in the in the back uh in the trunk just like right there i was like oh my god i was so young and stupid and i just like went and i told my mom i was like i saw the playstation and she's like oh shit <laughs> she's just like uh actually that's for the bakers um yeah you're not just, you're not getting one now because you just peaked so you don't get it anymore sorry <laughs> right that would have been that would have been brutal right life lessons right there that would have been a brutal thing for sure well she because she she convinced me that it wasn't mine she's like oh that's for the well, she doesn't want to ruin christmas you know well, right exactly like i was just i was putting weird. her in a really weird position yeah you know i would peek too but i would wait for the to get inside i knew where my mom kept them inside so when i had the house to myself i would just go look but my mom was like really smart about it and she would like wrap the presents right away so like mm. Yeah, she like really didn't want it to be ruined, so like I would find them, but they would be wrapped already. I'm like, would you like just get inside and just immediately wrap them, just so like I can't? I I swear that's maybe. What she, I, th- Pro- I think that's what or she would she? Sometimes you can wrap them in the store. Right. I don't think she paid extra for that. Though, yeah, I was so. gonna say. <laughs> Not my, my mom, mom. My mom only did it once or twice, <laughs> and that was for like for other family yeah, or not something. For families. Your own family, right? Yeah, but but my mom was pretty good at wrapping. She's a pretty good rapper. I'm pretty good at rapping. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, not that type of rapper. <laughs> I mean, sometimes. Cookie rapping. Cookie rapping. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm good at rapping presents. When I worked at Bitter Cube, I wrapped presents as mm. part of my job, so I got a lot better at it. So when mm. we would do fulfillment, people could put gift wrap as an option. So there'd be days where I would just be like, all right, I guess I got to wrap like 10 presents at work today. It's really weird. Hmm. So I would just like wrap presents. Yeah. Got good at it. Can I say? It's a meditation, I'm sure. Get all those folds just right. Yeah. Exactly. This could be a good meditation. It's pretty presents. all right. It's pretty all right. It's, it's like a kind of useless. 10 out of 10. Thing. It's all right. Yeah. I don't know. I think so. <laughs> I mean, you I'm like. 10 out of 10? I'm like a 9 out of 10. With my, Damn. My, my no, I mean, like, good. would you recommend? 10 out of 10 would recommend or. Wrapping like for me to wrap your presents? Or? No, no, just wrapping. Oh, like as a, as a thing? Um, I'd probably give it like a six. <laughs> I could think of better things to do. Yeah, it's better than five, but yeah, yeah, it's still pretty bad. Yeah, it's not great. It's fine. You hear that, all you present wrappers out there? Fuck your skill. I think I think though, <laughs> moving forward, I'm just not gonna wrap any presents anymore. Just yeah. I'm kind of put them in bags. Put them in bags, or just just hand it to them. You know, like just, hand it to just them, like yeah. wait until it's time to do the exchange and be like, "I'm just here, I agree, here dude. just take it." Just I agree. Like, clo- you know what you do? Close your eyes and just gradually open them, and it will be just like the same thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then you don't have to- take a little bit longer for you to see what it is, but now we're not wasting all the paper, so it's kind of kind of a win-win. Yeah, because on Christmas morning in my house. All of the paper becomes a giant, like, it just all goes into the fire. Yeah. But then our fireplace got, um, they, pl- they clogged it up because it was getting way too expensive for maintenance. And it was, like, 
causing issues with the heating. There's lots of drafts and shit. So they just clogged it up. But we still have an outside fireplace, but yeah. that shows you how there's a lot of waste. It's very wasteful. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe maybe this year I can convince waste. my family to do that. If, if I even do Christmas this year. But then you can't put it under the tree, right? And that's what everyone wants is like all the things under the tree. So like when you come, it's like, wow. It's stupid. Yeah. It's really dumb. You think uh, Christmas trees, do you think... Do you think it's a warning? Do you think we like cut them down, put it in our house as like warnings to other trees? They can like look in the, they like look in the in the house and they can yeah. see their like cousin, like decapitated yeah. with like strings all over. I mean, it. the way the world's moving, that's pretty much like the perfect symbolism of it. You know, we shouldn't be cutting down trees for any reason, in my opinion. Like, there's there's probably good reasons to st- to like cut down some trees but yeah. for the most What's part a good reason to cut down a tree i don't if feel it's like gonna fall if it's gonna fall if it's gonna ruin your your, your cable <laughs> actually i'm just kidding <laughs> but like look like seriously though it's like what about develop like i feel like if you're gonna have a christmas tree it should be fake and yeah we just don't need to be like i just don't want to support that as a thing i think it's just I can respect very that. unnecessary as a, it does feel a little unnecessary. Yeah. And the whole present thing, you know, it's like what I was saying earlier. Just blindfold everyone. Just, you know, have them, like, struggle to take the blindfold off. And then when they finally can see, they know what they got for, you know. That's a better tradition. I, I just spin them around a few times. Make them put them outside. Give them a make bat. It, yeah, like, mm-hmm. drop them off a few miles away and be like, you want to find your presence? Here's a map, you know, like... <laughs> That's that you would be work fun. For it. It's like a scavenger hunt. In this, in this family, you got to work for it. <laughs> and when you find your presents, they're not going to be wrapped either, so you won't know if they're they're yours or not. Yeah, I wonder what the psychological <laughs> implications of that. I wonder if that has something to do with people's entitlement. I it's think like, it does. Because like, I was definitely got a lot of gifts, like, and some. My mom was like, really feeds your ego. Because my mom, she was, she's all about it, dude. She's like all about Christmas and shit, and that's what she wants, but. Is because she grew up where she barely got it. My actually, <coughs> she would get gifts, but it was always like she's one of seventeen kids, so they wouldn't mm. get a lot. Right, like everyone like, got like a gift. Maybe. Right, you get like maybe you get a chocolate bar or some shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the she's seventeen all about it. seventeen chocolate bars. It's, it's expensive. It's expensive. <laughs> yeah, dude. Especially if everyone got a sweater too. Woo. Sweater. You know, like if everyone got like two gifts, like one's a chocolate bar, mm. and all you hear is a sweater. It's like seventeen sweaters and seventeen candy bars. It's like, sweater's a good gift. It is a good gift. I get a sweater almost every year from my folks. Really? Yeah. Do they? Do, where do they get it from? Coles, or I don't know. I always they always end up in Coles packaging. Like all my presents end up in Coles packaging because my mom saves the packaging. Yeah. And that's where she's done her most shopping. So. Every year, I like I'll open something up, and I'll be like, "Oh, like I got a sweater," but like sometimes it's just the box, and then you open it up, and it's like, "Oh, it's." Have you ever gotten an eighty percent off socks. thing at Kohl's on the clearance rack? I haven't, but it's, it's like pretty, pretty, good pretty feeling. much pretty much free then at that point. You get like a five dollar. You can get. It's just the shit that's like, never sold. Yeah. So a lot of it's ugly. Yeah. The only no time I go to Kohl's is when it's free. So, when is it free? It's like gift cards. Ah, uh, so Kohl's like, cash. Yeah, like when someone gives me a gift card, it's the only time I go My to Kohl's. My mom be like, "Here, here's some like thirty dollars in Kohl's yeah. cash." I think I've shopped at Kohl's with my own money like maybe once in my whole life. The rest of the time, mm. it's been like, "Oh, you got this twenty five dollar gift card." I'd be like, "All right, I guess I have to go here now." What I was trying to do for a really long time, and they used to allow you to do this when I would get gift cards. You could use the gift card to buy a Visa card that you could use anywhere. And I would do that for a long time. Mm-hmm. Like there are certain stores that would allow it. You'd go up there with your gift card. You'd have the card that you're buying with the gift card. And then you would put the gift card up there. And then, you know, the Visa one that you can use anywhere. And then they'd be like, all right, yeah. time to pay. And then you just hand them your gift card to pay. Hell yeah. And they out, they like got rid of that pretty quickly, I feel like. But I did capitalize on that for a period of time where I was like, all right. That's a smart move. It was pretty great because then I would yeah. get like the same amount of money, but I could spend it online. I could go anywhere. Wasn't stuck buying stuff at Kohl's. But 
They should go back to that. I really like that policy. No one's like thinking outside the box that much where they're going to do that. I feel like, I feel like it's just, like a, I feel like, yeah, they will. There'd be some people, but they're most of the people would just be like, oh, I'll go I think there's a lot of issues with those, those prepaid credit card things. Cause there's a lot of scams for them. Yeah. Like <laughs> I remember I worked at this place called FIS and they did fidelity information systems or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. They'd like write software for bank terminals and shit. And like merchant services, tr- tr- terminals and stuff, yeah. ATMs and things. And they were telling me about how, like about, yeah, one of the boss men was telling me about fucking a giant hacking scam with prepaid credit cards mm-hmm. or like, yeah, with those gift card, Visa gift cards, mm-hmm. but how they found out how to like make them or they... They bought a bunch and were able, or like so used like, ones, or they yeah, like re like put money yeah. back on them. Yeah, somehow. they put money back yeah. on them. Yeah, right. And it's pretty mind blowing. You yeah. know, that's that's I next mean, level shit. That's what they were doing with like the whole um, like the the reader for like that's why we're going to the chip now with our mm-hmm. cards because they're people were able to hack into those yeah, systems well, really the, easily. In Europe, they had the chips for like already so long, and like they're so much more secure. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's just, it took, took a while. Everything takes a while. America feels like. <laughs> well, anything that costs money to change, right. we're always the last to, to do because, you know. Why well, don't you think we have the met, we don't have the metric system still? That's a doozy, dude. I don't like, know. Wh- why can't we just have the metric system? We just need to change it. Yeah. I mean, you could have the metric system if you just learned the metric system and then that was like your reality and then you just talked in that reality and then everyone was just confused around you until they weren't one day right like Mm -hmm. yeah you're right (laughs) it takes enough people to do it starts with starts with us yeah the revolution we just gotta start using it i gotta learn how to use it how many centigrades do you think it is outside see i don't know how many fahrenheit's oh see like that's I can I can guess that it's like fifty two degrees maybe right now. So what is it like? It's fifty four. What is it like? Does that make it like twenty two degrees Celsius or something? See, you already know, dude. It's like thirty less. Twelve. Than... Okay. Oh shit, dude! It's gonna thunderstorm all day tomorrow. I feel like that's what it's gonna be like all week, except for Saturday. Fuck! It's supposed to rain today. It's supposed to like clear. Yeah. That was a weather with Ian. Um, Back to the gym with sports. Yeah. Weather on the 8th. Tune in later for more weather. For more weather. With with Ian. I should just come live, go live, and just give little quick little weather weather reports. Yeah, but you should be in, like, really precarious positions, like, where Mm. you're, like, you're live on location somewhere, and then, like, you're in, like, a really, like uncomfortable position that's like maybe yeah. life or death but upside like, down on you're a more tree. concerned about the weather so this is like <laughs> this is really wacky you're like why is why is ian on top of a jungle gym like about to fall telling us the weather is very strange <laughs> sounds like a lot of payoff i feel like people tune in yeah people really <laughs> like that. I, I have enough confidence in my balance i went to hot yoga yeah you know i'll be fine just don't go to hot yoga and then go do that you yeah might, i'm gonna be tired yeah Gotta get your rest. Yeah, I was definitely <laughs> definitely sore today, which is good. That's what you want. Yeah, that's what you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. So I don't I don't know uh, I don't know about this whole uh, election thing. We've got two weeks left. I feel like nothing. I mean, obviously nothing that we do really does much <laughs> yeah i mean we have but, we're choosing between a a fascist or we're choosing between you know the more of the same corporate oligarchy which is what we live in now so it's pretty much i feel like it's not looking good overall for it like keeps shifting that way too and that's what's the scary thing about me and that's why like the two party thing gets scarier is because i feel like it's it's shifting. it's really just one party let's be real. right let's be real it's not really a two-party system in America anymore. I mean, I mean, I hear you. I feel like we think that it's two because we still want to believe that there's democracy in this country, but 
you know, when you look at things and really how they are and like where the wealth right. is and everything Bernie Sanders stands for, it's like, well, is there really a two party system? Mm-hmm. Uh, not really. I don't feel like there is. And that's why it's like Same hard for me to here. like get excited about politics because I just don't feel like there's any representation for the people, which is the whole point of democracy. Yeah, we should all stop so. paying taxes. I really, yeah. Until Honestly, we we actually should start taking more drastic strike. measures. Yeah. Like, that's the problem. Like, people want there to be change, and they don't realize that they can make that change just by choosing to not pay things. If we all collectively stop paying our debt, fucking the world would change pretty quickly. Like, mm-hmm. things in this country would change pretty quickly because money talks. And I just like I really believe that. And no, like, I don't. I, agree. I don't think until. People realize that and they start taking risks with their own financial like future and their own like, you know, which like the government knows people aren't going to do that in mass probably because they're already in a dire spot. So they want that's psychological shit, dude. Like they know that people who already don't have enough, like they're already in a position where they're just like, fuck, I just need to, I'm trying to get through. Yeah. Like I'm not, I'm, I, I don't have time to, to. I'm working my ass off. To be an activist or or to do things like that, right. And that's the thing. It's like... The thing... Yeah, I I agree with the idea of uh, the one party to a degree. Because it's, uh, you know, right wing, left wing. It's all, you know, the same. Serves to distract us. Well, the... Keep us in line. The the same. They're both the wings of the same bird. You know what I mean? And I think what you say say is right about, like, the, the oligarchy. I totally agree. Both the parties seem to have their their leadership and their establishment seems to have completely been purchased, right? I mean, and that makes sense because we live in we live in a marketplace. You know, our culture is all defined around marketplace market economics, right? So it's like yeah. the why who are why would we pretend like politicians aren't for sale you know what i mean we already know they are but some people don't even like some people they know it's corrupt but they don't know like bribing is legal yeah and you can uh, and money is speech corporates are corporations are people right yeah i I read this quote the other day and i screenshotted it because i liked it so much um this is fat mike of no fx so why are americans so ignorant could it be that the american government wants them that way if they didn't, they might spend more on education. The best way to keep the status quo is to keep the majority happy. The best way to keep them happy is to keep them ignorant. Ignorance is bliss, and the blissful don't revolt. Mm. And it's like, it really like resonated with me because I really do Definitely. feel like that because people are way more uneducated in this country and they don't know their history. And that's why unions have been able to be busted so easily because... Mm-hmm. The government, the system, convince people that unions are these really terrible things where you have to pay these dues. And, you know, they convince people of the one thing that was a check on capitalism, that it was evil right. and terrible. And it just goes back to that quote. It's like, it's ignorance. Like, people don't know that that is actually supposed to be there to help them. And they just kind of just keep going through the motions of their life, not realizing that more and more of their, like, liberty and stuff is mm. being taken away. And they're not smart enough to maybe even realize it because we don't value education in this country nearly as much. And now they, they make it so you have to pay so much money to become educated that it's like such a risk. It's mm-hmm. like, it's risky to go to college because the payoff now isn't even guaranteed that you're going to even get the job. So it's like, yeah, I wonder. why is it set up like that? Why does our government want us to be stupid? And that's the things I think about all the time because if you look around at the people in this country, we're getting dumber. We're not getting smarter. That's for sure. Like we're lagging behind on all the tests like yeah. compared to every other country. So yeah, I remember being where hearing about that, like as a kid and being like, Oh God, and there actually was, I remember I had a, uh, a Dutch guy come into my ge- geometry class when I was like in sophomore, he was an exchange student. And I was asking him about like, and I wasn't, I wasn't like super fucking smarty pants because I didn't like to do homework, but I was still in the accelerated math class. Like I was okay at math. Like, and I, you know, I wanted to, I pref- sometimes the accelerated classes were just less interrupted too. The kids usually were more well-behaved, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, and the, 
because yeah, a lot they of wanted to learn. Yeah. yeah there's like a higher <laughs> standard or like p- kid. Yeah. Kids with that requires a lot more work. So it weeds out people that, yeah, aren't willing to do the work or willing to like at least learn. But this Dutch, this Dutch guy, yeah, he's like, yeah, I learned this stuff like three years ago. He's like, so, and he was already younger. Mm-hmm. I was just like, oh, okay. And, and I remember, yeah, reading those, the, those statistics online. It's only getting worse since then, since I was in high school. And that's Dude, 10 years ago. You know, so, so bad. Like, and Sch- it's people, Schools are just these places kids go to. to it's like, babysitting. Yeah. You know? It's just. That's all it is. Well, that's, that's why it need, there needs to be. And I just saw this, this, uh, these polls where it was like, the it, sh- it did all these issues and it said American, uh, the whole American people. And then it had Republicans and Democrats and then it had men and women and stuff. And it went through all those and, and looked at all the, these like major policies and like h- how many Americans agreed or disagreed with them, depending on their demographic. And the one outlier that was like, almost 80 over 80 percent in every single demographic was free child care and i feel like the, that's such a fucking game changer because if like if they if they if they have the babysitting if they have the child care taken care of they might be able to like i don't know i think this way about i think that's like the half of what school is like is babysitting and that's part of why it's tied to the fucking nine to five right like yep. it's oh no it's not nine to five it's like before work and then right and like it, the kids start before work and end right before work's over you right. know and, well they generally end during the work day technically but that's why after school programs exist and right babysitters and all that stuff you know and that i don't know i can't help but think that that's got to be such a motivating factor is the fact of um yeah that the kids that they're and i've heard you know and why it's so early is insane because they've done all the studies and it's been pretty proven pretty clearly that ch- kids, younger people are more um, like they're more likely to be waking up early, waking up later mm-hmm. than earlier. And that actually the, the results of the kids performances on tests and things oh, yeah. drastically yeah. improve after like 9 p.m. It's yep. so like you get them, you wake them up early, even if they had a good sleep, like there's something about it. It's like, yeah. Oh yeah. Just groggy. Human beings aren't supposed to just like wake up and then go right into like a very like strenuous, like where they have to be using all their brain power. We have to like gradually get into our day and like mm-hmm. drink water, like allow our body yeah, to wake water. up. But now we're waking up and just getting shoved on a school bus to like go do th- like, you know what I mean? It's just, I feel like. Mm-hmm. school isn't as uh i don't know like the whole idea of the american dream is so lost on people now that it just i don't know i feel like it it, it from like one like the family down to the kid if the family doesn't believe in the american dream because they've never been able to re- reach it themselves and they're just getting by then what's that kid gonna try like he, he doesn't right. they don't believe in the american dream you know it just becomes like this cyclical thing where it's like the american dream that is only for like the elite the select few right. that are educated enough and that's the problem they're making it so the barrier to entry to to get to that is like way harder and it's more based off where you come from and the whole idea of anyone can you know get that american dream that's really going by the wayside in america and it's like no you kind of either have to be really lucky and are born into it or somehow meet the right people and like, you know, move away from like your, your bad life. Maybe like if you're born into a family, like with problems, like with crime, whatever, like it takes that much more effort to get away from that. Like, you know, like I was born in a trailer park. I grew up like very like low middle class, you know? And it wasn't until I got older that I, met some people that influenced me in a different way and made me think differently that if I wouldn't have met those people, who knows who I would have become, you know, but like, I really feel like that's like the thing nowadays. Like you kind of have to realize that as you get older, that, you know, you can just be kind of stuck in this like cycle Mm -hmm. of like, this is what your family expects of you and this is what they do. And then it's like, it goes back to that whole nature versus nurture thing where it's like, well, 
at some point you have to take charge of your own life and be like, well, I want to surround myself with people like this because I want to move ahead in my life and, you know, do things that, you know, I'm proud of. But I feel like so many people don't have access to that. They don't have the mentors. They don't have the people. And if they they can find them, it's like a lot harder. And it's just like harder to even have the mindset to want to be able to do that. I don't know. It's, it's just very confusing because there's just like education is just yeah. really lacking and this is really sad. No, I think, I think you're totally right. I think with all the crises that are going on, all these crises, especially in America, that the number one root cause of crisis of the, all the crises is the crisis of ignorance. Yeah. And I think I've always, you know, that was one thing that I feel really fortunate of that my, my grandfathers on both my sides of my family were huge proponents of education and like education has been priority. Like as a kid, I mean, like it's always been, cha- my parents are always saying education, education, like always mm-hmm. like, and they, and it can get tricky because it's like now education means, Oh, well you get a degree and then the degree is what it is. Like, right. The piece, the pieces of paper that right. you can hang and on. That's not wall. education. It's yeah. like, well, those are nice little trophies. Right. But like they're not, uh, they don't represent your actual intelligence right. or your thoughtfulness or, or your, your experiences, yeah, your experiences, right? Yeah. Like, and I think that that's what it really educates you. And I think that's what's really, really that's, interesting. I'm a big believer in that. Like with the amount of ignorance there is too, though, there is, that's what's the, the paradox of the whole thing. It's like we have the internet and people can go online and learn anything they want. And I think what's the most important thing. Overwhelming though. But you can go on YouTube and find interesting shit. Right. You know, like you just search whatever you think is interesting and then you can find something. Right. But I feel like a lot of the times people get overwhelmed with all the possibilities now too. And then there's so many distractions now that yeah. it's like harder for them to compartmentalize and like be focused on any one, one number of things because they're just constantly being pulled in every which way. And then if you're born into a society with this technology with cell phones, like we were lucky enough where we didn't have technology when we were younger. Right. right? I feel very fortunate about that because it's like it helps my developmental process. I feel like I, don't know, I had know. plenty of technology, but it wasn't like things that was on my hip 24 seven. Right. Like this phone dude is crazy. Like I, can you imagine being like seven years old and having an iPhone and like, like how that changes you always with me? You, you know, know what I mean? This yeah. phone, it's, it's always with me. Right. And that's, that's, that's kind of scary, but, right. but I can look up, I like listen, I'll like learn shit as much as I can every day, you know, like, well, it's because things. I feel like you, like the, for you, it's different because you have this kid too. Like, yeah, but like you have a different life experience than a lot of people, you know, the fact that education has been stressed right, to you and, and like well, the and way you were brought up and stuff that all plays into it. Cause a lot of people just see phones as like a way to have fun with their friends and to play games mm-hmm. and they don't see learning as like a thing that's like it's a cool computer, man. and like that's really fun like because to me learning new things is really cool and really fun but i didn't think that when i was a kid and a lot of kids don't think that when they're kids but it's like the whole point is like as you get older you realize that learning stuff and doing things like on your own and figuring out how things work right that's what's exciting about life you know like when i first moved to milwaukee my friend and i started a gig poster business and we never printed posters before we never like had done any of that medium Mm -hmm. like it was all brand new we had the internet right we had forums and how do i start a business right (laughs) and we got a client because my buddy did some example work and we got of montreal as like our first client and we were like oh wow okay so we really we're doing this now so we got to like print these posters and they turned out terrible but it was our first poster we ever printed but luckily it's of montreal so the fact that it looked really messed up played to the fact that it's of montreal and they're like a crazy messed up band so it was like well it's fine that the artwork turned out the way it did yeah, it always works we kind of like lucked out but like it was one of those things where it was like well we want to learn how to do this we have phones and but like for not not everyone thinks like that or is willing to take a risk or to to try to do something like that but some people do and, some people and- do but i feel like as we move through time now it's becoming a little bit more abnormal for people to like just throw themselves Maybe. into something where they like that that's outside their comfort zone, I guess, you know, like, yeah, 
There's a lot of people don't want to just work for themselves or something because it's like really difficult and there's a lot of skills you need to have. And yet we're supposed to be the individualist thing, and I think that's why I think um, there's still threads of individual, rugged individual. And that's what you know I was saying about Emerson earlier. Like read, reading that was such a mind, like I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. Self reliance, like all this shit, where it's yeah. like, oh, I can do everything I need to do. But uh, I think I think uh, there are people that that do. F- do want to learn and do have that, oh, that experience. Yeah. But I hear what you're saying. And I think that's probably more important than teaching people just in, like about facts and about, yeah, you can yes. talk about history. You could talk about this. You could talk about whatever you could talk about. It's mindset. Ideas. Mindset. Right. It's you, you want, you need to, we need to teach kids and people to want to learn. Like, right. We want it's, to teach them to want to learn. Right. They like experience the, the joy of understanding and experience and of being yes. wrong and of like changing your mind. Thank and like you. That's coming. That I think that's exactly what I'm trying know, to say. If, if that's, that's, that's more important than, and I think it's because the fa- like you're saying, the failed education system is like the way I look at it is, and I've seen it. I remember since when I was a, in grade school, I remember thinking like these weird standardized tests were strange and yeah. it was like the Iowa's, what are we doing? The Iowa's we're, we're making and then I was like hearing that, oh, it all depends on how much funding the school gets. And then and then high school, you know, going into college, you hear about the ACT and all this shit. And I remember looking into it and it was just like, oh, shit. Uh, these, the ACT is owned by this like giant test making company and it's a private company and they own a bunch of other shit, like a bunch of other standardized tests. And all these standardized tests, like I started reading into that and being like, a lot of these things aren't even checked. And there was like some studies that went and looked through the answers and double checked them. And what they said was the right answer. Like there's, they'd be off by like a third, like a third of them were marked wrong. So it's like, you're changing the course of these fucking kids lives. And there's no checks to this. It's this private company. So essentially like the education system, America became totally privatized, right? like the, like, or at least like kneecapped and then like outsourced. Yeah. Right. And then all, then they, the kept, important part of it too. Yeah. Yeah. And they kept like, you don't have the arts anymore. Right. Once you get rid of the arts, then like, that's where you can find the joy in learning and experiencing. Right. When you're just sitting in front of a fucking like it's sitting in a desk when you're a kid and you need to move and literally all you need to do is move. Like if anyone's ever had a puppy or a child or whatever, it's just what they're made for. So like, this is a bizarre fucking thing that people still think that that's a good idea to just have them sit down. And, uh, there's a great doc- documentary called the Finland phenomenon. Mm. And it's like a professor, in America that goes to Finland and studies them. And like, it's a whole documentary on like how they do things and why they're always number one and everything. Yeah. And they have totally embraced the scientific method into their education system. And essentially all of their teachers have PhDs from earliest to, to mm-hmm. post doctorate, you know? And so because they all have PhDs, they're not just really well qualified and, you know, really smart people. They also are doing research. So they're literally like teachers are finding new ways and in working together, using the scientific method as all like teachers are now scientists. That's what we should be doing because everyone learns differently and every class is probably going to be a little bit differently and you need to be able to understand how you should be, you know, putting that material in front of people. For me, I learned best and a lot of people learn best by learning the information and then teaching it back to someone like that's how i like i keep knowledge in my brain everyone does dude right that's it's actually the, i think like statistically it's of retention it's like 95 percent of people like like you remember something 95 percent of the time if you teach it which right. i learned that and then that's when i when i learned that i was like okay everything i learned i'm just going to try to teach to someone which sometimes your friends don't appreciate you just going on and on about something but it's like sometimes i'll tell them like hey i'm trying to remember something you're just going to listen to me talk for a while <laughs> And then that's going to be well, it. That's what podcasts are for, dude. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's what live streams are. But that's the thing. It's like, I don't know why more schools don't have it set up like that. I remember actually in school, I had some good teachers that would have it be like, you teach the class today. And I, as I've gotten that's older great. and I've thought about that, I'm like, oh, that's a really good yeah, idea. Super, that makes, super smart. That makes complete sense. And I wonder if that's part of what they did 
in Finland, like you're saying, like if did they? There's so come... many different things that they do there. That's what's right. crazy, man. Because, and they did a thing. They did a thing where you don't you don't have any lecture until you're old. And granted, like they're doing research on their kids and what makes more sense for them. But like the I think the the problem that we face when we're see you kid, later. Someone's leaving. Sorry. Oh, Ladragi. Um, but the the way that I saw that when they were kids, they interviewed all these people and they interviewed all the kids and they're like, so why don't you sit down and like have lessons with these kids when they're younger? Like why? Because they, essentially they let them just play. Yeah. Like all it is is organized play. But the play isn't just, oh, let them dick around because they're fucking kids and they're stupid and all they want to do is just dick around. It's like, no, they're fucking kids. Yeah. They play. Have you ever seen a documentary in your life? Have you ever even, you know, like all animals right. need to play to learn. Right. So, so the Finnish, they, they, they embrace that and they allow the kids to play, but they organize it in such a way to teach them proper social behaviors. So like... And actually social interacting because how many fucking especially now with these fucking phones and shit how many problems like i'm sure there's so many social anxiety issues like oh there are and just totally. incredible amount of cognitive behavioral problems that happen because yeah. they don't have it's just like teenage suicides are way up like yeah just in the last i mean dogs five, are great ten years. dogs are great analogs too it's like when you don't socialize a dog he becomes an asshole and he, whenever he sees another dog, <laughs> you know what I yep. mean? I have like, some friends that have animals that are, and, yeah. And so it, it's the same principle applies to humans. It's like, if you don't teach them how to interact when they're kids, then mm. they're never going to, and that's the most important thing to learn. Like, so they're just, they're just using deve basic developmental science and, and, and just applying, applying it, it to education. Yeah, yeah. applying it. Yeah. And I mean, that's, I mean, that's things like our system hasn't changed in the beginning. It was basically like the Obama administration just did like a continue. It was like before it was no child left behind. And then he had like a, you know, like keep them going forever. And it was like the same th messaging, the same structure. Like, Oh, wasn't it like the, like a fresh start first to the top or something or like yeah. some, or like there's, I forget what it was, but it was, no fundamental differences. So just cutting around the edges, shifting, more privatizing too, more charters, more everything. Like, and you know, don't get me wrong. I think there's plenty of ways to learn. I don't think there needs to be public school for every like every single person has to go to a public school. I'm not, but I think that it should be a public option, and there should be a good public option. There should be good private options, and there should be good like homeschooling networks and stuff too, because I've met some fucking homeschool motherfuckers that are way more balanced than motherfuckers that go to great, that go to the stuff. Cause like, and they have homeschool networks, especially in Wisconsin and up North and stuff. There's yeah. like people in small, small in the country. They learn like way more cause they'll learn shit. That's like interesting. And then they don't, you know, and then they have, then they come together and it's like, right. They, they, well, they don't have to, it makes these learning laws. more fun, you know? Cause like yeah. there's such a stigma about learning that when you're in school, there's so many kids that, because it sucks when you're there, dude. Right. Like I fucking hated it, dude. Like mm -hmm. I had so much a disdain for my grade school. Like when I was there, I was so angry. Mm -hmm. I like just refused to do homework. I would refuse to engage. Just, I didn't. Like, yeah. Totally. Just, I was the like, same way till like third grade. I didn't even know what school was i i went to this place every day but it was for me it was just an extension of play time like i didn't i didn't like <laughs> yeah, pay attention kind of play i was just hanging out and then i started getting really bad grades and my parents were like how did you get an n like <laughs> an n yeah i'm like i don't know but i have not I, like i did i was like oh so i i have to like try and like try to learn like it was we'll lost on that me. to an S. I just didn't understand what school was like at a young age. I don't know. Because it yeah. was too much about just like being babysat, especially at the school I went to. It was like very unorganized. Like we were just doing whatever we wanted. We'd go on recess. We were just fighting each other. Just Hell like yeah. doing That's it what up. it should be, man. One day we got rounded up, like all 40 of us. And we got into the principal's office and the dean like... 40 people in a principal's office? Yeah, it was packed. We were like all... Like, we were little kids, what? but we were just like all... Oh, so it was a whole class? Yeah, it was right. like our whole class because we were all just fighting out recess. And I realized so that like, the, the dean had... Really fighting? Or like... 
I mean, we were like play fighting, but like but some yeah, kids would go out, you kids, know. Yeah. yeah, they got a bone to pick with each other. Yeah, it would just happen Alpha like on the far shit. side, oh, far yeah. side of the playground, you know, and like it on went on for a while. On like, the other side of the, the snowbank, the teachers had to like figure out how to organize to like stop us from doing it because there's too many of us doing it that they couldn't just like, you know what I mean? So they like they organize, they bring us into the the office, and then I notice um, that the dean has left the the office, so I just like walk out of like i just stand up <laughs> me and a couple other of my friends we just get up and we just walk out of there no one's like watching i just start wandering the halls and i just go into a classroom that's not even my classroom Whoa. and i just like sit down and like i just hang out in that class <laughs> that's awesome and then eventually like the teacher realized that i wasn't supposed to be in there and then someone came and got me and then the next thing i knew i was in like a special learning program and i was like all right cool i guess i gotta learn how to read now so that got, <laughs> that was like first and second grade for me. It was just like what a, very confusing, just like what a mind having fuck. a time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, why would you, why would you expect anyone to know the structure of this fucking school? If you never, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. It's such a, it seems arbitrary, but like the, when you're a teacher and you're there and you've had your whole life in this system and that's all, you know, it's like, this right. is non, this is obvious. It's fucking right. Like mm -hmm. it didn't help it, that we were watching movies all the time and stuff too. Cause then I was oh, just geez. like, well, this is just where we have fun. Like, you know, yeah. <laughs> there's cookies now. Like what? This is crazy. <laughs> Those smiley where, face cookies. That's yeah. where it all started. It's really where it started. Boom. All right. Well, um, full circle with the cookie. Yeah. Thing. It was full circle. Yeah. I was going to say <laughs> before we go, uh, Let's find say again where people can find, buy your cookies. You can buy it anywhere in the United States, right? Yeah. Um, I technically can ship worldwide too, but I don't have it as an option on my site, but I'm hoping to be able to get that going as well. Maybe in the future. We'll see. But yeah, right now you can go to ggfg.online and yeah, check out some, some cookies. I'm working on a chocolate chip cookie right now. I'm, I'm working to find like the perfect sugar-free uh, <laughs> chocolate chip. Lakanto is this brand that makes these really great chips. So I'm experimenting with that and, just trying to do the cookie thing. It's fun. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, and people can find can search bum alum too, right? Yeah. They can find that on the on the internets. Yep. Yeah, I just yeah, like I said earlier, I released a few EPs. I'm gonna drop another one pretty soon. Um but yeah, there's some music out there to listen to and yeah. Hell yeah. Thanks, buddy. It's been yeah. fun. Thanks for joining me and having a good conversation. And mm -hmm. for the cookies, I ate I ate three cookies. Yeah, you did. I sure did. Right. Well, I'll be all right. You'll be fine. I think I. I think you might have actually had four. No. I don't know. Maybe you didn't. You had one, right? I had one, but there was five when we started. Then I had four. Yeah. Fuck. I'm pretty sure I had one because I already had like three earlier. So. Well. It's been a lot of cookies today. <laughs> Let me make some soup. Try to balance it out. Yeah, balance. It. I had a salad before this, so. Smart. All right, man. Well, thanks again. And thanks everybody for tuning in. Until next time. Appreciate it. You um bye bye yeah